sana kwa ya Kimara B kutoka Dar es Salaam Tanzania ninapofahamu uh, naona wameamua kutoka kivingine kabisa kwa ya Kimara B kwa mara ya kwanza nawasikia wakimba aina hii ya uimbaji hapa jijini Mwanza nchini Tanzania matangazo mubashara ya Morning Star Radio na Hope Channel Tanzania sasa naye mama hapa mama tafadhali naomba usimame kidogo samani naomba usimame Uh, huyu mama katika kumbukumbu zangu kuwepo hapa katika huu upande ambao nimesimama hapa kila siku amekuwa kiwahi hapa na kuketi katika eneo hili hili ni kwa nini hasa mama Kwa vile nimevutiwa na mkutano huu napenda niwahi ili nipate kuhudhuria kuona vipindi vyote jinsi vinavyoendelea nipate kubarikiwa Na unatokea maeneo gani hapa Mwanza Natokea hapa Siansi Pasiansi oh. Ume umewahi kuja na mgeni yeyote hapa? Ndiyo. Wageni wangapi? Huyu hapa. Huyu? E. Ni mgeni wako. Binti e. naomba usimame. Unaitwa nani? Yasinta Yona. Na? Yasinta Yona. Yasinta. Uh, unaweza ukazungumziaje mkutano huu? Leo ni mara yako ya kwanza ama ni mara ya pili? Siku nyingi tu. Siku nyingi. Nini ambacho kimekufurahisha zaidi kwenye mkutano huu? mbaji masomo ya, ya kaya na familia au ni uh, hotuba uimbaji unapenda kwaya gani hasa ambayo umeifurahia zaidi katika mikutano hii kwaya zote kwaya zote anasema kwaya zote zimemfurahisha sasa tunakwenda kupata wimbo mwingine hapa kutoka kwa kwaya miongoni mwa kwaya ambazo tunazo hapa endelea kubaki nasi katika matangazo haya ya morning star radio na hope channel tanzania
Naam ni kwae ya igombe kutoka Mwanza hapa jijini Mwanza kando kando ya Ziwa Victoria uh, wakiwa wanatoka pale jukwani uh, kwa wimbo mmoja baadaye hivi wataingia kwaya ya uh, buzuruga ya vijana naye mama hapa uh, mama habari Unaitwa nani na unatokea wapi hapa Mwanza? Mimi naitwa Paulina Kayaya, natokea hapa Siasi. Leo ni mara yako ya ngapi kuhudhuria katika mkutano huu? Mimi ni mara ya kwanza, mimi nasalia Anglican, lakini nimependa uimbaji huu na kutambua vizuri Biblia. Nimefurahi kwa kweli sana. Jinaba uh, Amina. Nani amekukaribisha? Mwanangu huyu amekuja juzi lakini amenikaribisha huyu hapa Renato sisi mama wa kuone amesha jiunga Amina uh, pengine Renato sinaomba usogee hapa tafadhali uh, Renato si wakati kwaya akiwa anapanda pale jukwani Renato sinaomba ufanye haraka hapa kabla Na ni mtoto wangu wa mwisho Mtoto wako wa mwisho umebarikiwa kwa na watoto wangapi uh, Mimi na watoto wane tu namshukuru Mungu anaendelea vizuri mm -hmm. Bwana Yesu anawatetea Aha. Sasa ilikuwa kwaje ukapata nafasi ya kuja na hatimaye kumkaribisha mama? Ah ni siku ya tatu nipenda mafundisho nikasema moja nikaribisha mama yangu ni auzulia. Mhm. Mm yeah. Asanteni sana na hongereni sana na karibuni tena katika mikutano hii. Sasa tunabarikiwa tena na kwaya nyingine uh, kutoka hapa Mwanza kwaya ya vijana ya Buzuruga. Yeah. 
Asante uh, sana kwa ya vijana buzuruga kutoka jijini Mwanza nchini Tanzania. Matangazo mubashara ya Morning Star Radio na Hope Channel Tanzania. Ndani ya wanja wa sisi ya mkirumba, watu wanaendelea kumiminika kwa ajili ya kusubili yale ambayo na jili hapa. Na ninae mzee hapa mmoja, uh, samahani baba yangu naweza kusimama, tafudhali. Uh, Unaito nani? Una toka maeneo gani hapa Mwanza? Mabatini. Mabatini. Yeah. Uh, ni mara yako ngapi kuwepo hapa ndani ya uwanja kufuatilia mikutano? Tangu ameanza hapa sasa bado wanaendelea kuja. Mhm, tangu umeanza. Yeah. Pengine nini ambacho kimekuwa mvuto kwako katika mikutano hii? Uh, mimi nimefurahishwa na vitu vingi sana hapa. Mpangilio wa vitu kama aya matenti kamera zenyewe. Aha. Eh, pamoja na uimbaji. Pamoja na uimbaji. Yeah. Ehe. Uh-huh. Ndio. Yeah. Uh, pigire umekuja na mgeni yoyote mwalika rafiki ama uh, kwa leo sijaja naye lakini nimewahi kuandika mara mbili mara mbili ndio bwana kubariki sana, sana na anasema miongoni mwa vitu ambavyo vimefurahisha ni jukwaa letu hili zuri kabisa ambalo ni maalumu kwa mikutano yetu hii lakini pia mafundisho ambayo yamekuwa yakiendelea hapa akina mama kutoka Butimba ndio ambao wanatupatia wimbo wetu wa mwisho hii leo katika kuitimisha sehemu ya uimbaji kabla ya kuungana na watangazaji wetu wengine hapa kwa ajili ya kutembeza katika vipindi vyetu vitatu makini hii leo mimi ni Madu Emmanuel na tafadhali endelea kubaki nasi katika matangazo haya mubashara hii ni Morning Star Radio na Hope Channel Tanzania karibu Choka umesumbuka na shida za dunia hii Taabu ya adamu ndio Aya hii tanitishio Umechoka umesumbuka na shida
Jiji la Mwanza ambapo mikutano hii inarusha mubashara kabisa uh, maeneo mengine kule vituoni mahali kokote mtazama ufunuo wa matumaini tumaini la leo kesho na hata milele Mungu wetu ni mwaminifu sana ametupa zawadi tena ya siku nyingine jina la Bwana nalitukuzwe Amina Tunamshukuru maduhu Emmanuel kwa kutuongoza katika kipindi cha nyimbo na ninaamini ya kwamba we ambao umewahi katika viwanja hivi na we ambao unasikiliza kule majumbani uh, na kule katika vituo umebarikiwa sana. Karibu tena katika mikutano hii jiona leo. Amina. Amina. Ewe kijana, ewe mwana ndoa, ewe mwana kwaya. Mwana kaya, kama kijana naamini mpaka sasa hivi umefanya yaliyo maamuzi sahihi. Na wale wanandoa kama mimi naamini kama kuna mahali pa kubadilika, no. umebadilika kupitia vipindi vinavyoletwa kwetu na mchungaji David Mbaga. Karibu tena kuendelea kusikiliza vipindi hivi. Amen. Amina, lakini wapo watu ambao tayari wamepata mafanikio makubwa katika afya zao. No, Hii no, ni kwa sababu no. kwa wiki tatu kasoro siku chache mm. tumekuwa na mama yetu hapa mama Maxfield akikisha kwamba afya zetu zinakuwa mubashara. Naamini kwamba iko kijana ambaye afya yake imeimarika ni wakati wako wa kumshukuru Mungu. Amen. Yuko mama, yuko kijana, yuko hata mama anayenyonyesha. Pengine sasa hivi anajua nini nile hii niweze kumlea mtoto wangu vizuri. Naamini umebarikiwa. Lakini kama bado ukuguswa, tumaini lipo. Bado siku zipo Mungu atakubariki. Amen. Naam, naam, naam. Ninaamini ya kwamba wale wote walioko katika viwanja hivi na ndugu zetu wasikilizaji na watazamaji mlioko kule vituoni na majumbani kwenu na wewe kwako pia kuna badiliko limetokea mm. uliyekuwa umekata tamaa sasa umepata tumaini uliyekuwa hauna maamuzi sahihi sasa umeyafanya umefanya jambo fulani umepiga hatua fulani Mungu akubariki sana endelea kutufuatilia amen ikiwa imebaki siku tatu mfululizo ili mikutano hii iweze kuisha tunakukaribisha tena leo uh, sehemu ya matumaini bado ipo kwa ajili yako. Ni mwalike Judith Mgweno atupatie ombi la ufunguzi na kisha baada ya hapo peace na sifa watakujulisha nini kinafuata. Tuwatakie utazamaji mwema. Amen. Kwa hekima na kicho tusimame wote kwa ajili ya ombi. Tuombe. Baba yetu na Mungu mwema unayetupenda na kutujali. Asante kwa sababu umetupatia viwanja hivi kwa ajili ya kutafuta uso wako. Ni masaa mengine tena tunawaleta mikononi mwako watumishi wako. Endelea kuwatumia vile upendavyo. Naomba usikivu katika vyombo vyetu vya mikutano ili wale wote walio katika nje na hapa waweze kupokea neno lako na waweze kuokolewa. Ninawaleta mikononi mwako waumini wapya. Baba ninakusihi endelea kuwapatia ujasiri wa kusimama imara. Neno lako liwe taa na mwanga katika maisha yao. Tunaamini utakwenda kutenda hivyo kwa sababu ndilo hitaji letu. Umetuita kwa ajili ya kazi ya utume na tumeitika. Roho wako mtakatifu aendelee kuwa kati yetu. Katika pendo lako tunaomba na kushukuru. Amina. Asante sana mama kwa ombi zuri la kutufungulia vipindi vyetu vya jioni ya leo. Amina, uh, kwa ya mbu gani inayotokea kule Geita mm. watakuja kwa ajili ya wimbo wa kufungua kipindi chetu cha Kaya na familia kwa ya mbu gani karibuni sana? Karibuni wakati kwa inakuja peace tumeongelea kwa takribani siku mbili yeah. mchungaji amekuwa akiongelea haki za kina baba siku mbili mfululizo uh -huh. lakini sifa hii leo nina furaha sana mm. mwana wa kike yeyote uliyeko hapa mm -hmm. leo ni siku yetu leo zinaenda kuongelewa haki za kina mama mimi nitakuwa nasikiliza karibu na wewe usikilize maana leo na sisi ni siku yetu ya kusikiliza yanayotuhusu kaa katika runinga yako usiondoke chukua kalamu yako daftari andika vitu vya muhimu na Mungu akubariki amina
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hawa wameniacha hoi. Tafuta ndugu zako. Alafu eti shangazi zako. Sijui aliweka na wajomba. <laughs> Mungu abariki sana kwa ujumbe mzuri. Ah uh, Ninawashukuru sana wale ambao siku ya jana wameonesha moyo wa pekee sana kuwasaidia ndugu zetu. Bwana awabariki sana. Tumeona mwitikio wa pekee sana. Hatuwezi kuchukulia jambo hili kwamba ni la kawaida. Ni mguso wa roho wa Mungu na Mungu aendelee kuwabariki sana. Siku ya leo kabla ya kuanza somo napenda kumuita mchungaji mchome kuna kuna ujumbe mmoja nataka ausome maana nikiusoma mimi haitaleta uzito sana nirudie tena kwamba ujumbe wote ambao mtu anatutumia wa ushuhuda wote huwa hatuusomi hadharani mpaka muhusika aruhusu ndio sheria kwa hiyo muhusika huyu aliruhusu karibu usome utasoma mpaka hapa alipo ni ruhusu. Um, ujumbe unasema pasta nimeelewa masomo yako ya ndoa. Nilikuwa natarajia kumuacha mke wangu na tayari nilikuwa nishaandaa mchumba mwingine. Nimeairisha kwa msisitizo nimebatizwa kabisa. Mungu azidi kukutumia uokoe ndoa za watu. Pasta akamjibu akasema ubarikiwe sana na akamuuliza Unaniruhusu nisome ujumbe huu? Jibu likawa ni hili. Haina shida soma tu. Amen. Sasa hizo ni moja mbili ziko nyingi 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 sana ambazo ukizisoma utashangaa jinsi ambavyo Mungu ameendelea kuwagusa watu jana tulitulishia katika sehemu ambayo tumeangalia hivi jana tulikuwa tunaangalia namna ya kuishi na kina nani eh na jamani bwana kuishi na ehe nikukumbusha kidogo hao wazee msiwaone hivi Sioni hivi ya wazee wana vitu vingi sana kichwani. Wanabeba mambo mengi sana katika akili zao. Na kwa sababu hawaongei. Kuna wakati unaweza ukamwona amekuja amenuna. Ukadhani ana hasira na wewe. Kumbe ada ya mtoto ambayo unajua ililipwa juzi alikopa. Na hakukuambia. Na kumbe yule ambaye amemkopa ameanza kudai hela zake. Na pale unapomuona mzee anakuja amenuna nyumbani, ana mawazo mengi sana, kumbe anaidai hela zake, amemtumia message nzito na mbaya. Hawezi kukuambia, hawezi kukuonesha, anagangamara hivyo hivyo tu. Ningewaomba sana akina mama kwa kuhitimisha somo la jana. Hawa wazee mkiwaona katika hali ya namna hiyo, muwasaidie ili waweze kumaliza huu msongo vizuri. Si kwa kuwauliza maswali mengi ila ni kwa kuwa karibu nao kwa kuwafahamu usiwaulize maswali mengi maana utamchanganya. Nipungieni mkono. Sasa leo tunakuja kwenye somo linalosema namna ya kuishi na hawa. Na hii ni sehemu ya kwanza kesho ni sehemu ya pili. Na hizi pointi Usije ukakaa mkao kusema tutamaliza zote haziishi zote ni nyingi sana. Kwa nikasema kwa wale ambao bado unafuatilia katika mitandao ya kijamii ukanifuatilia katika Instagram unaandika tu Pastor David Mbaga. Bas, kila wiki nina masomo ambayo ni live kabisa na maswali yanaulizwa. Kule ndio unauliza maana huna wasiwasi hakuna air time kule. Ni voda kumi yako au tigo au air tele au sasa tele ndio ambayo utaitumia ni wewe mwenyewe kwa kule utauliza mengi sana namna ya kuishi na hawa 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 si tunamfahamu hawa 
Jamani tunamfahamu Hawa? E, huyu Hawa huyu. Namna ya kuishi naye. Utaishije naye? Kwa haraka sana. Utafurahi sana kuishi na Hawa. Tunamfahamu Hawa wetu? Si ndio hivyo eh? Kama tu utafahamu mambo matatu muhimu yafuatayo. Cha kwanza, yale matatu ya kwanza, utambue ya kwamba yeye ametoka ubavuni mwako. Hajatoka kichwani wala hajatoka mguuni, ila ametoka ubavuni. Hii ni pointi ya kwanza uizingatie. Ukijua ya kwamba hawa wako ulie naye, ametoka ubavuni na wala sio miguuni, hutamkanyaga. Haleluya. Haleluya. Hutafanya nini? Ukiona mwanaume yote anaye mkanyaga hawa ni ishara ya kwamba hajui alikotoka, anadhani ya kwamba Mungu alichukua kisigino naye akatoa kanyama kisha akaumba mtu, sio? Ila Mungu alitoa ubavu. Haleluya. Na wewe mzee, kama ukijua hawa alitoka ubavuni na wala hakutoka kichwani, hutamuweka kichwani ila utamuacha ubavuni mwake. Unasema mchungaji unamaanisha nini? Ni kosa kubwa sana kumwachia hawa majukumu ya nyumbani ni ya kwako. Yeye ameletwa kuwa msaidizi kwa lugha rahisi kuitwa mwanamume ni kuwajibika. Mbona sijasikia? Amina. Ni kuwajibika. Wewe ndio utengeneze mazingira, lakini jambo la pili kama utatambua kuna wakati huyu hawa wako anabadilika rangi kama kinyonga ila anabaki kuwa hawa yule yule japo rangi imebadilika ukielewa hili siku ukija ukimkuta leo amekuwa wa kijani wala hutauliza kwa nini ni wa kijani ila utajua tu ni homoni zebadilika upelekane naye kwa jinsi alivyo hujanielewa Hawa mama wameumbwa kwa namna ya pekee sana. Waache kama alivyo. Yaani kuna siku anaweza akaamka ana hasira na hajagombana na mtu. Yaani asubuhi tu ameamka tu ana hasira. Na huwa wakitoka kazini hasa wale ambao wanafanya kazi na uhurumia sana, ametoka kazini na narudi nyumbani, ana msongo wa kazi, alafu ana msongo wa nyumbani. Hasa hawa kina hawa kwa sababu wanaongea kwa hisia zaidi kuliko kutafakari. Wao watafakari, wanaongea kwa hisia zaidi. Ndio maana wanalia sana, niliwaambia hata kwenye misiba wanaweza wakalia msiba ambao hata hamjui marehemu. Ni kwa sababu tu wanaongea, yani wao wanajieleza kwa hisia sana. Kwa hiyo usije ukashangaa. Sasa anapokuja ametoka kazini, amekuja pale nyumbani, usije ukashangaa kwa sababu anabadilika tu kama kinyonga. Msongo wa kazini anauleta nyumbani. Na cha kwanza atakachoona wakati mwingine unaweza kumkuta hawa anachokilaumu kwa wakati ule kiukweli sio chenyewe ila kuna kingine umenielewa vizuri unaweza ukamsikia anapiga kelele nyumba sio safi watoka wajafanya usafi vizuri hamjapanga vitu vizuri kiukweli ule sio mgogoro wake mgogoro wake kuna mtu aliyemkera huko ila anahamishia kwenye vyombo anahamishia hata kwa kuku unaweza huyu kuku naye yani kila saa tu anaweza kuku hahusiki Ndivyo walivyo. Waelewe hivyo. Lakini atabaki kuwa hawa yule yule. Namba tatu, Mzee kama ukitambua hawa ana mchango mkubwa sana katika maisha yako. Chanya au hasi, lazima ujue. Yaani hili lazima wazee mlielewe. Ndio maana ikatokea umeachana na mke wako. Hata kama unasema hatukufunga ndoa. Lakini akakupeleka mahakamani ana haki zake za msingi. Na wala uwezi kusema nyumba nilijenga mimi, jina litumika la kwangu, swali ni kwamba mliishi naye kuanzia lini? Wa tangu mwaka fulani ana haki zake. Unaweza usizione, lakini nikwambie, ukitaka uelewe umuhimu wa mwanamke nyumbani, asafiri akuache mwenyewe. Ndipo utaelewa. Hamjanielewa vizuri. Mimi naongea na ninyi, mke wangu akiwa amesafiri kiukweni, anaelewa shuka atakuja kubadili siku akija maana sisi huwa tukiamka tunawaza unajua wanaume ile staili yetu ya mishipa yetu ilivyoundwa kwa namna hii sisi huwa tunawaza vitu vya muhimu kwa wakati huo ndio tunavyowaza hivi kwa hiyo ukiamka asubuhi mwanaume cha kwanza ambacho kinakuja kilini mwako ni kuingiza hela kazi kuwahi kazini 
Neti iwekwe vizuri mwanaume anauliza. Ni iweke hii neti vizuri. Anaingia chumbani kwangu kukagua ni nani? Hayupo. Nitandike. Anayekuja kuangalia fajatandikwa ni nani? Anakuja kufuata inamuhusu nini? Mtatandika jioni. Ndume inaondoka. Akirudi sikia sikiliza. Akirudi mwanaume amechoka kwa sababu anaangalia kitu cha wakati huo tu. Anakuja pale chumbani kwake anaangalia kile kitanda jinsi kilivyo, anakuja kujiuliza eh? Sinaenda kulala eh? Hivi wakati nikilala Shuka itakunjamana haitakunjamana jibu ni kwamba itakunjamana kwa nikinyosha sasa hivi hii shuka ikakaa vizuri nitakuwa nimeokoa nini hakuna naenda kulala nitatandika kesho siku ya pili akina mama nyie mkisafiri tuongeeni ukweli bila unafiki ili darasa halitaki unafiki huwa mkisafiri irudi nyumbani kwenu kwenye kile chumba unakuta kiko sawa ulivyo kiacha tofauti kabisa Mshike mkono jirani yako mwambie umeelewa <laughs> Mzee Marekana nashukuru sana leo <laughs> maana ndio kwenyewe leo <laughs> Sikia hili fungu sikiliza hili fungu haraka sana Petro wa kwanza sura ya tatu fungu la saba. ni kati ya mafungu ambayo yamepotoshwa sana 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 sikiliza linasema hivi kadhalika ninyi waume kaeni na wake zenu kwa akili na kumpa mke heshima kama chombo kisicho na nguvu na kama warithi pamoja wa neema ya uzima kusudi kuomba kwenu kusizuiliwe swali nini kizuizi cha maombi kwa mujibu wa Petro moja uh, Petro wa kwanza tatu saba nini kizuizi cha maombi narudia kadhalika ninyi waume kaeni na wake zenu kwa akili na kumpa mke heshima kama chombo kisicho na nguvu na kama warithi pamoja wa neema ya uzima kusudi kuomba kwenu kusizuiliwe nini kinachozuia maombi hapa mwanamke kwa hiyo mwanamke kuna sehemu anakaa anasubiria maombi yako alafu ana anayazuia anasema hivi kama hutakaa vizuri na mke wako hata maombi yako yanafanya nini lakini mzee mzee zingatia haya, ma, haya maneno haya kadhalika ninyi waume kaeni na wake zenu kwa hasa ukishaambiwa tumia akili kwa nini unaiga style ya kuishi ya pita marwa ya chacha Acha chacha atumia akili na wewe tumia akili maana unamchunguza wa kwako unamtazama unasema huyu wa kwangu kwa akili kwa huyu wa kwangu ili uishi naye kwa akili inabidi ufanye hivi hasa unaiga sikiliza vizuri natamani sana kusoma lugha ya mkoloni pia kwenye biblia ambayo tumeizoea sana inaitwa biblia ya mfalme james inasema hivi likewise ye husbands Dwell with them according to knowledge. Ishi nao kwa mujibu wa ufahamu. Ndio maana nikasema mwanzoni kuishi na mwanamke, kuishi na mwanamume inatakiwa uwe na nini? Ufahamu, hekima, maarifa. Kwa nini anakazania maarifa? Ikabidi nianze kuangalia. Hivi hivi hii akili ambayo nasema ni akili gani? Nilishangaa mambo niliyoyakuta nilipoanza kuchambua neno hili tu ishini nao kwa akili wayunani ni matajiri wa misamiati katika msamiati waliotumia wayunani kwenye neno hili kwa akili kwa akili ni neno gnosin maana yake ni ufahamu unaoingizwa katika vitendo yani baada ya kujua mwanamke akoje ishi sasa kwa jinsi ulivyojua Usije ukaishi kwa jinsi ulivyozoea. Maana kuna mtu anakuambia, "Ah, kule kwetu bwana, kule kwetu." Kwa mazoea ya kule kwetu. Mwanamke anaongea nini? Hawezi kuongea. Haiwezi kai. Sikiliza. Mzee, tambua mambo haya ya msingi tena ya mwisho matatu. Alafu nitaingia yale mengine ili tumalize. Cha kwanza tambua unatakiwa utumie kitu gani? Utumie kitu gani? Cha pili, 
unatakiwa ujue kwamba mwanamke anahitaji kuheshimiwa lakini ujue namna ya kumheshimu nakupa mfano rahisi sana ni kosa la jinai kumkemea mkeo mbele ya watoto au wageni ila huku wa design hii hawapo <laughs> mwana signo yenu pale nyumbani ambayo inaeleweka lakini namba tatu chombo kisicho na nguvu maana yake ni nini kama anasema kiheshimiwe na ni chombo kisicho na nguvu kutokuwa na nguvu maana yake ni nini niwaulizeni swali la haraka haraka nitamani pate mfano halisi lakini kwa bahati mbaya nikawa nimeukosa kuleta mbele yenu lakini mtauelewa vizuri hapa katika mkono wangu wa kulia nimeshika glass ya maji katika mkono wangu wa kushoto nimeshika kikombe cha plastiki cha maji. Kati ya vikombe hivi viwili ni kikombe kipi cha thamani kuliko kingine? Ongeni basi kwa sauti kubwa. Ni glass. Kati ya hivi vikombe viwili ni kipi kinataka kiangaliwa kwa umakini mkubwa? Ni kipi unaweza ukadondosha bila kuogopa? Plastiki. Glass je? Ukisikia Biblia inasema mwanamke ni chombo kisicho na nguvu hamaanishi manguvu ya mikono anamaanisha ni cha thamani kubwa na kinataka uangalifu mkubwa kukitunza mwanamke sio plastiki <laughs> Maana plastiki unaweza ukapiga teke tu piga teke Biblia inakuambia mwanamke ni glass thamani yake ni kubwa kwa hiyo mshikilie kwa umakini Haleluya. Ndio maana, ndio maana nikasema hili ni kati ya mafungu ambayo yamepotoshwa sana. Lazima wanawake wana nguvu. Nani amekudanganya? Nimeona wana wananyanyua zege, nimewaona kabisa. Wanafanya kazi ngumu kabisa, nimewaona kabisa. Mafundi wapo, mimi nimeona mafundi kabisa. Tena kwenye jua kali. Kuna picha moja ninao ya mama makenika, fundi makenika. Yuko bize kabisa. Ukiniambia hana nguvu asingefanya hiyo kazi. Anaposema hii maana yake ni kwamba ni chombo cha thamani kinataka umakini mkubwa sana. Sasa unisikilize na kwanza kugusa sasa naanza kukanyaga mafuta sasa. Naanza kukanyaga mafuta sasa. Mnamfahamu ndege anaitwa kasuku? Eh? Kasuku unapoongea si anaiga sauti yako? Mwanaume nisikilize. Mwanamke ni kama kasuku. Vile anavyokufanyia nyumbani ni majibu ya vile unavyomtendea. Sisi kama imeeleweka vizuri. Kwa lugha rahisi sana, anasema wapendeni wake zenu kama Kristo alivyolipenda nini? Alafu anasema akalitakasa kwa neno. Anayetakiwa kumtakasa mke ni mwanamume kwa kutumia maneno. Sio kila siku mke wako unamrushia matusi utegemee atakuwa smart. Matusi unayomrushia anakuwa na msongo atasahau atakuchana nywele. Matusi unayomrushia atakuwa na msongo atasahau kuoga. Matusi unamrushia atakuwa na msongo atasahau kuosha vyombo. Kwa lugha rahisi Biblia inakuambia ukihitaji mwanamke awe vizuri mtengeneze kwa maneno mazuri. Yako maneno ambayo wanaambiwa. Kiukweli hitaji la kwanza kabisa la mwanamke namba moja ni kupendwa mwisho wa kunukuu. Lakini kupendwa kwenyewe ujue ni kupenda kwa ufahamu wa hekima. Hasa unasikiliza ni kupenda kwa namna gani? Wakolosai 3:19 anasema, "Ninyi waume wapendeni wake zenu msiwe na uchungu nao." Kwa nini anasema msiwe na uchungu nao? Anakuambia hivi Upendo ni mafuta. Ndio mafuta ambayo yanampa mama nguvu ya kuendelea. Ila usimtendee kwa mujibu wa hisia zako. Yaani usimtendee kwa mujibu wa hasira zako. Ila tenda kwa ufahamu, usitende kwa hisia. Nataka nikupe mfano rahisi sana. Unapenda petroli wewe? Kuna mwanaume anayekula petroli hapa? 
Eh? Nauliza kuna mwanaume anayekula petroli? Lakini ukiwa na gari unaweka petroli uweke petroli. Unaweka petroli kwa ajili yako kwa ajili ya gari. Ni kwa ajili ya gari. Tuko sawa? Kuna matendo ya upendo ambayo unamtendea mkeo sawa na kuweka petroli. Si kwamba unaipenda petroli ila unajua thamani ya gari lako. Ukijua thamani ya mkeo hata kama alikuudhi mnunulie kitu mletee. Usimletee kwa sababu alikufurahisha. Mletee ukijua ile ni petroli ya kumfanya asonge mbele. Kama umenielewa nipungie mkono. Hey. Maneno matamu kwa mke wako futa. Maneno ya kumkatisha tamaa yanamrudisha nyuma. Kwa kuwa wao wanaongea kwa hisia. Ndiyo maana maneno wanayatafsiri kwa hisia pia. Na nukuu wimbo ulio bora sura ya tano fungu la sita. Sikiliza haya maneno vizuri kabisa. Na haya maneno ni ya mama, ni shairi hili. Anasema, kinywa chake, anaongea bari ya mume wake. Kinywa chake, kimeja maneno matamu. Ndiye mzuri sana pia pia. Ni huyu mpendwa wangu, ni huyu rafiki yangu. Kinywa chake kimejaa maneno namna gani? Sio ile mzee anakanyaga ndani ta. Walikuwa wanacheka wote wananyamaza. Mimi. Na anapoingia picha kwanza mmekakatu hapa mnakakatu. Haya. Na niwaambieni wazee watoto wetu hao ambao tunalea wazama hizi wametuweka lebo ambazo hatuzijui na hutazijua wanazijua wao wenyewe. Unaweza ukashangaa kuna mzee anaitwa Osama. Yaani ile tu kingia tu da wanapenda si kina Osama kaja. Wote kabisa wametulia kabisa kabisa kabisa. Eh yani hakuna shida kabisa. Yaani kuna mzee mwingine tu jinsi alivyo kwa tabia zake na maneno yake jinsi watoto mpaka wanamfahamu kabisa kabisa. Ile akikanyaga tu. Nasikia simba kaingia swala ifichee. Yaani maana kila mmoja akae mkao mzuri chunga sana maneno matamu kwa mke wako ni faraja ni mafuta tutaanza kuangalia ni aina gani kesho tunaanza kuangalia ni maneno gani yasemwe vipi ili kuwa mafuta kwa mke wako simame ni tuombe Baba yetu uliye Mungu mtakatifu asante kwa somo la siku hii ya leo Tunatamani kila mmoja wetu baada ya kupata ufahamu huu uingie katika vitendo kwa utukufu wako Asante maana umesikia na utatenda kwa jina la Yesu tumeomba na kuamini Amen Tunamshukuru Pastor Mbaga kwa somo la leo. Amina. Binafsi nimebarikiwa sana, sana sana. Na kama kuna kitu sifa nimeondoka nacho leo, mm-hmm. labda tuwaambie wachungaji hapa mbele kwa niaba ya wanaume wengine wote. Aswa. Sisi ni glasi. Sio vikombe vya plastiki vya kupiga mateke. Amina. 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 Na pia maneno matamu kwa mwanamke ni dawa. Na kesho tutasikiliza vizuri hayo maneno gani ambayo mnapaswa mtuambie jamani. Kina baba na mimi leo mmeelewa. Ah mimi nafikiri kwa niaba ya wanaume wenzangu hebu tuvungiane mkono kama tunapata pata hivyo. Haleluya. Amina. Mimi nafikiri tuwathamini tu, tuwathamini na kuwajali kama glass. Eh tushike vizuri. Wanaume tumepata vizuri na nafikiri pastor Mchome ni wakati wa kubadilika. Naam Na hii ndio matumaini sasa kwa wanandoa. Mungu awabariki sana. Amina. Amina. Uh, kwa ya mkolani, karibuni sana kwa ajili ya kusindikiza kipindi kilichopita lakini pia kukaribisha kipindi kinachokuja. Pastor Mchome, tujuze kuhusiana kipindi kinachokuja. Kipindi ambacho kinakuja mbele yetu ni kile kipindi cha kujenga 
mm. afya zetu tukae vizuri tunaamini tutabarikiwa Amina Mama Maxfield pamoja na Daktari Esperanza watakuja hapa kwa ajili ya kipindi baada tu ya kwaya mkolani karibuni sana Amina
Karibu ni tena katika mfululizo wa mada zetu za siri ya ustawi. Tumekuwa na wakati mzuri sana hapa. Tumekuwa tukipitia katika tiba zote ili tuweze kuwa na afya njema. And I know that many of you are following them. Na ninajua wengi wenu mnazifuatilia. Even the two year olds. Kwa sababu ni za uhakika. I was shown a video the other day. When I was exercising on the screen, a little two-year-old was going like this, and it was amazing. Even the little kids are doing this. So we want to follow all of these remedies. Water. Exercise. Mazoezi. Love and trust in God. Upendo na matumaini kwa Mungu. And lifestyle. Mtindo wa maisha. Which is temperance. Ab kiasi. And abstaining from everything that's harmful. Kuachana na kila kitu ambacho kina madhara kwetu. And nutrition. Na lishe. And environment. Mazingira. Taking those deep breaths. Kuchukua uh, hewa kutoka ndani. Expanding the lungs. Na kupanua mapafu. And then sunshine. Na mwanga wa jua and sleep. We learned about sleep last night. And I was told that many people wanted to be like the third sleeper. The one who slept peacefully. So we're going to talk about sleep again tonight. And to be healthy, we need restoring rest. Tunatakiwa tupate aina ya pumziko inayorejesha. And we all benefit physically. Kwa sababu wote tunafaidi kiwili, mentally, kiakili, socially, yami, and spiritually na kiroho from adequate rest and sleep. Tunapopata pumziko la kutosha na usingizi wa kutosha. Now we learned in our last program katika uh, kipindi kilichopita tumejifunza kwamba that scientists divide sleep into two major types. Wa sayansi wamegawanya usingizi katika aina mbili. There is non-REM sleep Usingizi wa kupepesa usiwa pepesa macho where it's very light at first unaanza kwa usingizi mwepesi and then you go into that deep sleep alafu baadaye unazama kwenye usingizi mzito and then there's REM sleep kuna usingizi wa kupepesa macho or rapid eye movement au huo usingizi wa kupepesa macho which is now the dreaming stage of sleep ambayo ndio hatua ya kuota ndoto and when we're in non-REM sleep, tunapokuwa katika usingizi huu wa mwanzoni, we go very slowly. Tunaanza polepole kidogo kidogo. And then we transition into deep sleep. Polepole tunazama kwenye usingizi mzito. And it's during this deep sleep. Na ni katika kipindi hiki cha usingizi mzito that the body is renewed. Mwili unazalisha seli mpya. And even repaired. Na unaanza kujikarabati. And that's why we need to make sure we have enough time to get into deep sleep. Ndio maana tunatakiwa tuwe na muda wa kutosha ili tuweze kupata huu usingizi and then following deep sleep baada ya huu usingizi mzito which is non rem sleep ambao ni usingizi usio pepesa macho then we move into rem sleep tunaingia sasa katika hatua ya mwisho ya usingizi and then we go from that deep sleep into dreaming tunatoka huko huko tukiwa katika usingizi mzito tunaingia katika hatua ya kuota and it's at this stage ni katika hatua hiyo that the mind is benefited so just as we need the deep sleep kama vile ambavyo tunahitaji usingizi mzito for the body to repair kwa ajili ya mwili kujikarabati scientists believe wasanasayansi wameamini kwamba the REM sleep or dreaming sleep huu usingizi mwingine ambao ndio wenye kuota huu actually restores the mind ndio unaokarabati akili so it's REM sleep 
Kwa hiyo ni usingizi huu wa kuota huu that facilitates our learning and our memory. Unaotuwezesha sisi kuweza kujifunza na kuwa na kumbukumbu nzuri. That's why if you're a student in school, ndio maana ikiwa wewe unasoma shuleni or you're taking a test the next day, au wewe una siku unaofuatia unafanya mtihani, it's very important not to stay up all night. Ni vizuri usikae macho usiku. Not even to study, sio tu hata kusoma, but to get to bed early. Uende ukalale mapema siku hiyo. And then your learning and memory will be much better. Ukiamka wakati wa mtihani kumbukumbu yako itakuwa ni nzuri sana. And so we learned last night. Kwa tulijifunza jana. Something very fascinating. Vitu vingine vizuri sana na vya ajabu. That there are some causes of sleep deprivation. Kuna vitu vinavyotusababisha tukose usingizi. And there are many people who have sleep debt. Kuna watu wengi wana madeni ya usingizi. And we learned na tulijifunza kwamba when you take your computer to bed unapotukua laptop yako hapo kitandani and you try to do your work in bed unaanza kufanya kazi yako kitandani or you take your cell phone au unaanza kuchukua simu yako ya mkononi on your cell phone, na wakati hapo ndio unaanza kuzungumza or you're on your ipad au unaanza kuchukua ipad yako and you're trying to do this just before you go to bed unaweza kuweza kuanza kufanya kazi zako hapo na mambo yako mengine that this is going to disrupt your sleep itasababisha isumbue usingizi wako but when you take your bath lakini unapooga that warm relaxing bath yani maji ya uvuguvugu yanayotuliza and then you take your bible alafu ukae kitandani ushike biblia yako and you relax in bed alafu umetulia kitandani then you sleep much better unalala vizuri zaidi So we learn that there are some things that actually keep us awake. Na tukajifunza kwamba kuna mambo yanayosababisha tushindwe kulala. And we don't sleep as well. Na hatulali kabisa. Because when we're working, kwa sababu tunapokuwa tukifanya kazi, the mind is still going. Ni kwamba tayari bado akili yako inakuwa ikiendelea kufanya kazi. And so we don't have that restful sleep. Kwa hiyo hatupumziki ya kutosha. And then we learned if we're sedentary all day, tukajifunza kwamba kama siku nzima tumekuwa na maisha kuto kujishughulisha. Hatukufanya mazoezi. Getting out in the sunshine. Na hatukutoka kwenye mwanga wa jua. Then we don't sleep as well. Ina maana pia hatutaweza kulala vizuri. So not enough exercise. Kwa hiyo usipofanya mazoezi ya kutosha. During the day. Na usiku za saa mchana. Ina maana pia usingizi unahama. And then of course eating late at night. Kula usiku, usiku kula chakula. If we're eating that heavy food at night. Unapokula kile chakula kizito usiku. That can keep us awake. Hiyo usingizi pia unahama. So how much sleep do we need to be healthy? Kwa hiyo ni masama ngapi ya kulala tunayotakiwa ili tuweze kuwa na afya njema? Well, we learned last night. Tulijifunza jana from studies that have been conducted kutoka katika tafiti nyingi ambazo zimefanywa. That the majority of us need 7 and a half to 8 hours a night. Wengi wetu sisi tunatakiwa tupate masaa 7:30 mpaka masaa 8 ya usiku. There's a very small minority that can get along on 6 and a half to 7 and a half. Watu wachache sana wanaweza wakakaa nzuri kwa masaa 6 na nusu mpaka 7 na nusu. But then there's another group. Lakini pia kuna kuna kikundi kingine. Ambacho nacho pia ni wachache sana. Wao wanahitajika masaa nane na nusu mpaka tisa. And you can tell if you've gotten enough sleep. Unaweza mwenyewe ukajipima ukaona kama ulilala vizuri au la. Because you'll be energetic during the day. Unapoamka asubuhi unajikuta uko na nguvu. If you're sleepy during the day, na kama unasizia mchana, you probably haven't gotten enough sleep. Inawezekana haukulala vizuri. Because we need a good restful night of sleep. Tunatakiwa tupate usingizi mzuri na pumziko mzuri kabisa usiku. To go all day until it's bedtime again. Ili tuweze mchana mzima kuweza kuwa na nguvu mpaka tena wakati mwingine wa usiku kulala. Just like little pamoja na watoto wetu pia play all day long Angalia watoto wanacheza mchana mzima and they're exercising wanafanya mazoezi and then they sleep alafu wanakwenda kulala wanalala kweli kweli and they're not sleeping in the day na wawalali mchana and that's the way it should be with adults ndivyo hivyo ingetakiwa kuwa na watu wazima so let's go through some suggestions for sleeping better tunaweza kutukatoa ushauri juu ya namna ya kulala vizuri well for the best sleep we need to have regular hours kwa usingizi mzuri tunatakiwa tuwe na masaa hayo hayo so if we go to bed at 9:30 kama tunakwenda kulala saa 
tatu na nusu. We need to sleep until 5:30. Tunatakiwa tulale mpaka saa moja na nusu. If we go to bed at 10 o'clock. Au kama tunakwenda kulala saa nne. We need to sleep until at least 6 o'clock. Basi tukalale mpaka saa mbili asubuhi. But we do that night after night after night. Na tunafanya hivyo kila usiku kila usiku jizoezeshe kuwa na muda maalum wa kulala. We go to bed at the same time. Unakwenda kulala muda huo huo. We get up at the same time. Unaamuka muda huo huo. And these regular hours. Na huu muda huo huo wa kulala. Help us to sleep better. Utakusaidia uweze kujijengea namna kulala vizuri. We establish a regular eating schedule. Alafu sasa ujipangie muda ule ule wa kula. We eat at the same time every day. Unakula muda ule ule kila siku. In our home nyumbani kwetu and even here in africa hata hapa afrika we eat at 8 o'clock in the morning tunakula saa 2 asubuhi kila siku and then we eat again at 1 o'clock na tunakula tena saa 7 and then if we do any supper at all we usually eat at 6 o'clock na kama tunakula chochote basi tutakula saa 12 so then we have those 5 hours in between our meals kwa hiyo tunakuwa na masaa matano kati ya mlo na mlo that we talked about being very important hiyo imetumezungumzia so we have a regular eating schedule. Regular meals with nothing between. We disrupt our body when we're eating in between meals. And Harvard University reported an article that was entitled Nighttime overeating can throw weight and health out of sync. Unapokula kula sana usiku kunaweza kukasababisha matatizo ya uzito pamoja na afya mbaya. So when we eat late at night, tunapokula tumechelewa usiku, it can actually contribute to greater weight inaweza ikasababisha uzito mkubwa and can actually throw our body out of sync inaweza kusababisha hata na magonjwa katika mili yetu so we don't want to eat late at night hatutakiwi kula tumechelewa usiku and eating at the wrong time can throw the body's me- uh, metabolic cycle- cycles off unapokula jioni sana muda usio takikana unasababisha mwili wako unashindwa ku- kuingia katika mfumo wa uchakataji wa chakula actually leading to weight gain tayari inaanza kuingia katika and then some people wonder why they gain weight. Well, if you're eating late at night, that's when you gain the weight. So we need and we need to empty that stomach before we sleep. Unatakiwa utoe kila kitu tumboni kabla kujaenda kulala. You will sleep more soundly. Ili uweze kulala vizuri. If your stomach is full and the food is undigested, kama chakula chako kina cha kama tumbo lako lina chakula na chakula hakija mengenywa. Especially if it's filled with junk food. Especially haya vyakula ambavyo ni vya mafuta vimekaangwa au vyakula vilivyokobolewa. It will be very difficult to have sweet sounds sleep. Itakuwa ni shida sana kupata usingizi mzuri. So we need to empty that stomach. Tunatakiwa tuondoe kila kitu tumboni. Before we go to bed. Kabla hatuja and then it's important to avoid stimulants like caffeine and nicotine. Ni muhimu sana uepuke vichocheo kama vile kafeini kwenye vinywaji pamoja na nicotine kwenye sigara. Now for best health we should give up nicotine and caffeine anyway. Kwa afya njema kwa vyovyote vile tunatakiwa tuachane na kafeini na nicotine. But we'll look at what the medical reports say. Lakini angalia pia katika tafiti hizi za kimatibabu ambazo zimesema. Harvard Medical School's report says this. Chuo kikuu cha Harvard kitivo cha tiba kinasema caffeine which is found in coffee, tea and sodas. Kemikali ya kafeini ambayo inapatikana kwenye kahawa, chai na na soda and even other beverages. Hata vinywaji vingine keeps you awake inakusababisha unakuwa macho by blocking the odenosine kwa kuazuia hii kemikali usingizi and the odenosine is a brain chemical that helps you fall asleep na hii kemikali usingizi ni kemikali inayotengenezwa kwenye ubongo ambayo inatusaidia kulala so when you drink that coffee tea or sodas kwa unapokunywa kahawa chai au soda that can actually keep you awake itakusababisha utakaa macho 
And for some people, na kwa watu wengine, the researchers found kwamba, that even a single cup of coffee in the morning hata kikombe kimoja tu cha kahawa asubuhi means a sleepless night. Ina maana jioni usiku anashindwa kulala. So we need that restful sleep my friends. Tunatakiwa tupate ule usingizi mzuri uliotulia rafiki zangu. And the researchers found also na watafiti wamegundua kwamba that a lack of sleep disrupts the hormones kukosa usingizi kuna haribu vichocheo fulani mwilini the hormones that control actually appetite and hunger vichocheo ambavyo vinadhibiti njaa na hamu ya chakula you actually have higher levels of ghrelin and lower levels of leptin unakuwa na kiwango kikubwa cha kemikali au, au kichocheo njaa na unakuwa na kiwango kidogo kichocheo zuia njaa when you're sleep deprived unapokuwa hujalala vizuri and what does it do na inafanya nini it actually wants you want to have more sugary foods unajikuta huna nguvu kwa hiyo unatamani kula vitu vya sukari you actually crave those sugary foods unatamani kula vitu vya sukari because you want to boost your energy kwa sababu unataka kuongeza nguvu yako kidogo but it doesn't lakini haifanyi hivyo and it helps you to uh, doesn't help you to act want to exercise na lakini pia inakusababisha ushindi wa kufanya mazoezi and you feel more fatigued unajisikia umechoka so we need to follow these breath remedies we've been talking about kwa hiyo tunatakiwa kufuata hizi hizi ratiba tiba ambazo tumekuwa tukizitoa what is a little thing to do to help us sleep better kuna kitu kingine ambacho kitawasaidia kulala vizuri just simply take a 15 to 30 minute nap if you're tired ukiwa unasikia kuchoka angalau uweze kulala mchana kama dakika 15 mpaka 30 peke yake now sometimes when i come here to the meeting at night wakati mwingine ninapokuja hapa kwenye mkutano jioni i just take a 15 minute nap ninakuja tu ninapumzika kwa dakika 15 just to energize my body kwa ajili ya kuongeza nguvu mwilini so i take just a little nap una, kidogo unasizia tu kidogo and that little nap will energize you na kale kusizia kidogo kanasaidia kukutia nguvu and then another thing that will help us to sleep better kitu kingine kitakachotusaidia tulale vizuri is to exercise ni kufanya mazoezi I think you're beginning to realize how important exercise is. Nafikiri mnaanza kuelewa jinsi gani mazoezi ni muhimu. And we are always exercising. Na kwamba wakati wote tunafanya mazoezi. We went out for at least almost an hour this afternoon. Kwa kila siku tunafanya mazoezi hata leo tumefanya kwa saa moja. Tunafanya mazoezi kwenye jua mwanga wa jua. And part I even ran. Na sehemu ya mwisho huwa hata nakimbia. Ninakimbia kabisa kurudi nyumbani. And that energizes you. Na ile inakutia nguvu and help you to sleep better. Inakusaidia unalala vizuri. And one thing is for sure. Na kitu kingine ni kwa uhakika. You don't do your work in the bed. Usipeleke kazi zako chumbani. You do it in the office. Nenda kafanye kazi zako ofisini. You do it in the kitchen. Usifanye huko jikoni. In the living room but not in bed. Na hata ukibidi ukafanye sitting room sawa lakini ukienda chumbani unaharibu. And another thing is is you don't discuss problems at bedtime. Kitu kingine tena usifanye mazungumzo au ya tabu zako huko chumbani. That's no time to discuss problems. Huko sio mahali pa kuzungumzia matabu yako. You simply say to your husband or wife. Huko sio saa za kwenda kuwaza kuzungumza vitu vingine kwa mke au mume. I think we will do better in the morning. Unamwambia mke wa mume na fikiri tuzungumze vizuri asubuhi. Let's not discuss that tonight. Ninaomba tusizungumze leo. We'll both feel better after we rest. Kwa sababu tukishapumzika tutajisikia vizuri kuzungumza. Don't you think so? Hamfikirii hivyo? I think that we'll all do better if we don't try to discuss problems when we're tired. Mimi nafikiri ni vema tujifunze kutokuzungumzia matatizo chumbani tukiwa tumechoka jioni. And another thing that will help us to sleep better. Na kitu kingine kitakachotusaidia kulala vizuri. Is to take a warm bath. Ni kuoga maji ya uvuguvugu. And relax. Na utulie. When we are home, tukiwa jumbani. My husband takes a bath almost every night. Mume wangu anachukua anaoga kila siku jioni. 
If you don't have a bathtub, kama wewe huna lile libakuli lile la kuongea, nenda katafute pipa. Then just sit in that tub. Nenda kaliweke maji uingie huko ndani. Nenda kakae huko ndani kwenye pipa la maji au kugugumu. Tulia huko ndani. Nenda kajiloweke huko ndani ya pipa. Huko mchochote ulicho nacho. And you'll sleep better. Alafu utalala vizuri. And then sleep in a quiet room. Kalale kwenye giza lakini kwenye chumba kilichotulia. Na mahali palipo tulia penye giza. God made us to sleep at night. Kwa sababu Mungu ametufanya tulale usiku. When it's dark not light. Kwa sababu ni giza na sio mwanga. And then always remember my friends. Siku zote kumbuka rafiki yangu. Kuna usemi unaosema. It says early to bed. Nena kitandani mapema. Early to rise. Unaamka mapema. Makes a person healthy, wealthy and wise. Inamsababisha mtu kuwa na afya njema na tajiri na hekima. So we want to make sure we get to bed early enough tunatakiwa kuhakikisha tunakwenda mapema kitandani and then trust in god and pray na tena umwamini mungu na uombe trusting god is very important umwamini mungu ni muhimu sana to relax kupumzika kutulia knowing that your whole life is in his hands mai kujua kwamba maisha yako yote yako mikononi mwake and a life of trust prepares the mind and body for restful sleep maisha ya utulivu na matumaini yanaandaa mwili wako wote na akili kwa ajili ya kulala vizuri and my friends we need daily sleep marafiki zangu tunatakiwa tupate usingizi wa kila siku and we need a day of weekly rest as well. na tunatakiwa tupate siku ya kupumzika kila wiki you see god has built in a, a, a time clock within us marafiki zangu mungu amejenga muumba wetu amejenga ndani mwetu saa ambayo ina mzunguko wa siku saba our loving creator has built a biological time clock in our body ameweka ndani ya miili yetu saa a plan ambayo imehakikishwa ambayo inazunguka ma inajirudia hivyo hivyo a seven day cycle is built into our very fabric inazunguka kila baada ya siku saba iko ndani ya nyama iko ndani ya mwili iko ndani yako and it's amazing na inashangaza because we need to get that sleep tunatakiwa tupate huo usingizi within a seven day period katika kipindi cha siku saba or it's lost forever au inapotea milele let me give you an example nitakupatia mfano If you sleep five, only five hours one night, kama kwa usiku mmoja unalala masaa matano peke yake, and then you sleep nine hours the next night, alafu usiku unaofuatia unalala masaa tisa, that's 14 hours. Hayo ni masaa 14. And now you need to divide it by two because you've had two nights of sleep. Unatakiwa kuyagawanya mara mbili kwa sababu umekuwa na mausiki na mausiku mawili ya kulala. So that's only seven hours. Kwa hiyo hiyo ina maana kabisa imekuwa ni kama masaa saba unalala. So then you're going to need to have 10 hours. Kwa hiyo sasa tabiri usiku nyingine ulale masaa kumi. because then you have 24 hours kwa hiyo sasa utakuwa na masaa 24 unalipia kwa siku tatu so you divide it by three. unagawanya mara tatu and now you have 3/8 of 24 tayari utakuwa na masaa nane nane kwa hiyo masaa yote you do that all week na unapofanya hivyo wiki nzima until you come to the end of the week mpaka mwisho wa wiki and you divide how many hours you had by seven unaangalia ni masaa mangapi umelala unayagawanya kwa saba and then you can make up for some of that alafu sasa ufilie hayo masaa unayodaiwa lakini baada ya hayo masaa saba uwezi kufilia tena milele na itaathiri afya yako you see god has created a seven day biological clock within us ndugu zangu mungu ameweka ndani mwetu mzunguko wa siku saba saa iko ndani mwetu inazunguka kwa siku saba and this is why our loving creator has given us the seventh day sabbath ndio maana mungu wetu anayetupenda ametupatia uh, uh, siku sab, sabato ya siku ya saba not because god was tired si kwa sababu mungu alikuwa amechoka we would need the rest lakini si alijua tunahitaji mapumziko and we would need the fellowship with one another tunahitaji kushirika kati ya mtu na mtu and we fellowship with god anatutakia ushirika na mungu and the sabbath provides a great opportunity sabato inatupatia fursa kubwa to restore both our mind and body kwenda ku, 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 kutuliza akili zetu tu pamoja na na mwili pia. Si Mungu wetu huyu ni wa ajabu sana. He's given us the Sabbath. Ametupatia Sabato. And God's Sabbath is heaven's rest. 
sabato ya Mungu ni sabato ya mbingu and defense for unending work hii ni kinga dhidi ya kazi zisizoisha if some of us didn't have the sabbath kwa sababu wengine hapa tusingekuwa na sabato we keep working and working and working tunafanya kazi tumefanya kazi tunafanya kazi tungekuwa na masimu sana zote tuko na na computer tuko na ipad But God gives us the Sabbath. Lakini Mungu ametupatia Sabato. To come and rest in fellowship. Angalau tukae tupumzike katika ushirika na Yeye. Na unajisoma Biblia. See my friends, we need all of these remedies. Marafiki zangu tunahitaji hizi zote tiba. And we need to make right lifestyle choices. Tunatakiwa tufanye chaguzi zinazofaa. Because lifestyle right lifestyle choices play a key role. Kwa sababu chaguzi zetu za maisha zinachangia pakubwa in determining not only the length of our lives si tu uh, kuamua urefu wa siku tunazoishi but the quality of our lives lakini pia ubora wa maisha tunayoishi you see i want to be active when i get old mimi nataka niendelee kuwa hivi ninapokuzee mimi sitaki kuwa mzee mimi sio mzee ni kijana kwa hiyo unapojishughulisha wakati wote inasaidia tunatakiwa tufanye chaguzi sahihi katika maisha ni muhimu sana tunapochagua kushirikiana na Mungu na kufuata sheria zake za afya alituahidi kwamba atatuimarisha He will give us good health. Atatupatia afya njema. And so my friends. Kwa hiyo marafiki zangu, we are shall be individually. Tutakuwa hivi hivi kila mtu atakuwa hivi hivi alivyo. Each one of us. Kila mtu alivyo atakuwa hivyo hivyo alivyo. Kwa muda huu sasa na milele zote What our habits make us. Kile ambacho tabia zetu kimetujengea. And that's why we want to develop good habits. Ndio maana tunatakiwa tujenge tabia njema sasa. Because the same habits here. Kwa sababu tabia hizi tunazoishi sasa. We're going to have through all eternity. Tutakuwa nazo huko milele. So let's go over a few teeny tips tonight. Hebu tupitie kidogo dondoa hizi za tini. Three habits to establish. Tabia tatu za kuanzisha. Establish a regular schedule schedule for sleeping anzisha muda maalum wa kulala a regular schedule for eating anzisha muda maalum wa kula and a regular schedule for exercise na muda maalum wa kufanya mazoezi and the best is outdoors na ma- mazoezi mazuri ni yale huko nje in the natural light asubuhi huko katika mwanga and now here are three things to avoid kuna vitu vitatu vya kuepuka stimulants like nicotine and caffeine vitocheo kama vilivyoko kwenye sigara na caffeine and avoid taking your work to bed with you. Epuka kupeleka kazi zako kwenye kitandani. And avoid any conflict or discussions at night. Epuka mazungumzo yote magumu jioni usiku. And now here are eight things you can do. Sasa kuna vitu nane unavyoweza kufanya. To have a better night's rest. Ili uweze kulala vizuri. Get plenty of fresh air in your bedroom. Hakikisha chumbani kwako kuna hewa safi ya kutosha. So open those windows. Fungua hayo madirisha. Keep the sleeping room dark and quiet. Fanya chumba chako kiwe na giza kidogo na kina utulivu. And if you have a hard time sleeping. Kama unapata shida kidogo kulala. You can even drink some of those relaxing herbal teas. Unaweza ukanywa hizo chai za mitishamba zinazo Lisa. The herbal teas are good for us. Hizo chai za mitishamba ni nzuri kwetu. And can be relaxing. Na zinaweza zikakutuliza. And then take a warm bath before going to bed. Nenda kaoge maji uvuguvugu kabla hujaenda kulala. And allow at least an hour to unwind. Ruhusu kama lisali moja ya wewe kufunga kazi yako yote uliyofanya mchana mzima. Work right up until bedtime. Usingoje mpaka ule muda wa kwenda kulala. Na kidogo anza kutulia. And then go to bed early. Nenda kalale mapema. And spend time with your Bible. Nenda katumie muda wa kusoma Biblia. Read the word of God. Nenda kasome neno la Mungu. And spend time praying. Tumia muda kuomba. And trust God. Na muamini Mungu. Trust him. Muamini. Trust him more every day. Muamini Mungu kila siku. To take care of all your worries and anxieties. Kwamba yeye atachukua mahangaiko yako yote na tabu za kuzote. Because my friends he will. Kwa sababu huyo ndivyo atakavyofanya. And third John 2 uh, says this. 
Yohana wa tatu sura fungu la pili nasema Beloved I wish above all things Wapenzi katika mambo juu ya mambo yote that you may prosper Ninatamani muweze kufanikiwa na kuwa na afya njema even as your soul prospers Kama vile roho zenu zinavyofanikiwa So here you have all these eight natural remedies Marafiki zangu sasa tuko na mfululizo wa hizi tiba zote nane All wrapped up in wellness Yote imewekwa katika neno linaloitwa wellness na katika hizi usiku mbili zilizobakia tutaenda kuzifanyia tuguvizipisha maana ni hewa safi mwanga wa jua kiasi mapumziko mlo sahihi matumizi ya maji na ukumwamini wa Mungu hizi ndizo tiba za kweli hizi ndizo zitakazokusababisha uweze kuwa na afya nzema This is God's health assurance. So may God bless you. Kwa hiyo Mungu awabariki. Unavyoishi maisha miaka 100 ukiwa na afya njema. May God richly bless you. Mungu awabariki kwa kiwango kikubwa. As you follow his plan. Unapofuata mipango yake. Because God's plan. Kwa sababu mpango ya Mungu. Is the best plan. Mpango sahihi. God bless you. Mungu awabariki.
tuna tuna ishukuru sana kwaya ya kimarabi kutoka kule jijini Dar es Salaam na wimbo wao unaosema sikilizeni labda pastor Mbwambo nimekuwa nikijiuliza kidogo ndio hivi kwa nini tufuate kanuni za afya kwa nini tuzifuate ninapenda kumnukuu mama Mark Phile mara nyingi anasema because God's way is the best way yani mpango wa Mungu ndio mpango bora na ni mpango wa Mungu tutunze afya zetu amen tunashukuru sana kwa sababu hakuna mpango bora kuliko mpango ambao Mungu ameweka kwa ajili ya afya zetu. Na jioni ya leo nipenda kumshukuru tena mama Mark Finley kwa masomo mazuri aliyoyafundisha. Nimegundua ya kwamba kumbe kuna uhusiano mkubwa na hizi kanuni zimeungana moja baada ya nyingine. Haswa. E, yani kunywa maji kuna uhusiano na mazoezi. Mazoezi yanahusiana na pumziko, pumziko linahusiana na lishe. Now. Yani vimeunganika. Amen. Mungu atubariki sana. Amen. Uh, tuwalike tena leo katika wimbo wetu wa mkutano ikiwa ni sehemu ya matumaini na tutakuwa tunaimba wote kwa furaha. Pengine ungetujuza ya kwamba leo tutakuwa na somo gani maana baada ya tu ya wimbo tutakuwa tuna somo maalum kutoka kwa mchungaji Mark Finley. Naam, somo la jioni ya leo ni somo zuri sana na la pekee kabisa. Naam, linasema siri ya kifedha isiyojulikana duniani. Siri ya kifedha isiyojulikana duniani. Je umesikia umewahi kusikia kisa cha Yesu aliyeshinda mauti na aliyeshinda dhambi tutakuwa tukimba pamoja tunapokaribisha mikutano hii jioni leo karibuni Asante sana Umewahi kusikia Sacha Yesu Ali yeshinda mauti na dhambi zote Huyo ndiye tumaini la leo tena ni tumaini la kesho pia tumaini la milele Yesu mokozi Ali mshinda yule mogu Msalabani Takupanda we mandaka Ya kumshinda Tumaini la leo Tena ni tumaini la kesho Pia tumaini la milele Yesu mokozi Umpoke Yesu leo
You may be seated. It's another beautiful night in Mwanza. And for those of you who are joining us via satellite, welcome. The book of Acts is being repeated. God is moving throughout Tanzania and Africa. We are getting hundreds of reports. And it's really important possible to read them all. And the reports we read are just a little sample of what God is doing. At uh, Mibora in the Ruangwa area, that is the Lindi region. Eight were baptized this week. Now that may seem like a small number. But that region has been very difficult for the word of God. And so that's a real breakthrough for Christ. 30 people listen in sign language at the Dodoma Deaf School. And the receiver in the satellite dish was donated by the Apagla Seventh Avenue Church. I'd like to especially welcome our hearing impaired here in Mwanza. You are so welcome to be here. And many through the sign language are being baptized. They're hearing the gospel. In the Unga LTD area in Arusha, it is an area of grinding mills where they grind a lot of corn. And Pastor Joseph Otenio reports that 37 were baptized there in that region. God God is at work in Tanzania. Let's go to southern Tanzania. Way down south in the Lupande area in Jombe. Six were baptized from southern Tanzania. But wait till you hear this report. They're in Kamanga. There was a baptism of 154 people. Can you say praise God with that? Now, there's one interesting thing about that baptism. 14 were from the Kataguru Secondary School. How did they hear the message? They all listened to Morning Star Radio. Or Adventist World Radio. And they heard the entire message through the radio program. Uh, recently, 45 Five were baptized in, uh, in Geita area. And that was in Butundwe. Butundwe. <laughs> My American tongue gets twisted around some of those African syllables. Now here's an interesting story that's just developing. There's a marketplace in uh, 
Hapa ni nguruka. Nguruka. And that marketplace is surrounded. Na hili eneo limezingirwa by a school, na shule, a hospital, hospitali, and a police station. Na kituo cha polisi. And the school is on one side, na shule iko pande moja. The hospitals on the other side, hospitali iko pande mwa pili. And the police stations on the other side. Na kituo cha polisi upande mwingine. Right in the middle of all that. Kati kati pale. There's a satellite dish. Kuna kingamuzi cha satellite. And people gather. Na watu wanakutanika. To hear the word of God. Wakilisikiliza neno la Mungu. At Lupunga hapa ni Lupunga and a Morogoro hapa ni Malinyi kwa ni Morogoro there are 10 preparing for baptism wapo 10 ambao tayari wanaandaliwa kwa ubatizo and at Maratunguru na Murutunguru uh, there are 15 that just were baptized on the island of Ukawere na wamebatizwa hao 15 kwenye kisiwa hicho cha Ukerewe. So the message of God. Hivyo ujumbe wa Mungu. Message of Jesus. Ujumbe wa Yesu is penetrating these mighty islands. Unapenya kwenye visiwa hivi. At the uh, Kimbundu Central SDA Church in Kagoma. Na kanisa la Adventist Sabato la Kibondo kati Kigoma. Eighteen were baptized in a beautiful outdoor baptism. 18 wamebatizwa na wakao na ubatizo mzuri kama mnavyoona. And at Butatata, Butata. Na hapo ni Butata. In Mara. Mkoani Mara. 63 people were just baptized today. Watu 63 wamebatizwa leo. God is at work. Mungu anatenda kazi. And at uh, Bupanda Gila. You got that. Bupanda Gila. Hapo ni Bupanda Gila kama mlivyomsikia. 84 were baptized today. Shule ya sekondari kanisa la Bupanda Gila 84 wamebatizwa pale. And there's that secondary school that was there too. Na shule ya sekondari iko pale pia. And uh, that's all at Baradi. Na hiyo ni wilaya ya Bariadi. And it, you know I love it when we get reports of young people coming to Christ. Tunajua tunapenda kupokea taarifa hizi za vijana wanaomjia Yesu. There are 300 students. Wapo wanafunzi 300 at the Mbeya Adventist Secondary School. Katika shule Adventist Sabato ya Mbeya. 21 were baptized today. 21 wamebatizwa leo. And of those 300. Na kati ya wanafunzi wale 300. Only four are not yet baptized. Ni wanne tu wamesalia kubatizwa. But they are preparing for baptism. Na wanaandaliwa kwa ajili hiyo. So we praise God. Hivyo tunamsifu Mungu. For the miracles that he is working. Kwa sababu ya miujiza anayoitenda. He's doing something special throughout Tanzania and Africa. Anafanya jambo fulani la pekee kwa ajili ya Tanzania yote na Afrika yote. Now my message tonight. Sasa ujumbe wangu jioni ya leo is financial advice ni ushauri wa kifedha from the world's wisest book kutoka katika kitabu chenye hekima kuliko vyote katika dunia and some wise african elders na kutoka kwa wazee wenye hekima wa kiafrika and the wealthiest men in the world na walio matajiri zaidi dunia so tonight let's pray hivyo jioni ya leo tunapoanza tuombe father open our hearts baba fungua mioyo yetu open our minds fungua mawazo yetu speak to us tonight through your book nena nasi kupitia kwa kitabu chako jioni ya leo and grant to us na tupatie as we follow your ways tunapofuata the richest blessings of heaven baraka zilizo nona kutoka mbinguni in jesus name katika jina la yesu amen amina in my imagination katika fikra zangu i'm traveling tonight ninasafiri usiku wa leo out into the african bush mpaka katika kichaka au maeneo ya pori la it's rather late at night na pengine ni jioni sana usiku Come with me and gather around that campfire. There are four African elders there. And they're extremely concerned. They're talking about a young man in the village. He's only 17 or 18 years old. He's been herding the cattle. Amekuwa akichunga ngombe. 
ng'ombe. But he has a desire. Lakini anayo shauku. His desire is to leave the village. Shauku yake ni kuondoka kijijini. His desire is to come to a large city. Shauku yake kubwa ni kuja katika jiji kubwa. Like Dar es Salaam. Kama Dar es Salaam. Arusha. Arusha. Or Mwanza. Au Mwanza. But he has one desire. Shauku yake ni moja. He wants to make money. Anataka apate pesa nyingi. He wants to leave the customs of the elders behind. Anataka kuachilia nyuma na kutupilia mbali tamaduni za wazee. This young man kijana huyu thinks that money is his god. Anadhani kwamba pesa ni He thinks money will solve his problems. Anadhani pesa itatatua na kuwa ufunguzi wa tatizo The African elders discuss the situation. Wazee hawa wa Kiafrika wanajadili swala hili. And they invite the young man to come around the campfire. Wanamkaribisha kijana ajongee katika moto ule uliokuwa. Listen in to their counsel. Hebu sikiliza ushauri wao. There are two amazing African proverbs about wealth. Kuna misali mbili za ajabu kabisa za Kiafrika juu ya mali. In my imagination. Katika fikra na kufikiria. I hear those African elders speaking to this young man. Ninawasikia hawa wazee wa Kiafrika wakimnenda wakizungumza na they say to him. Na wanamwambia Pesa sio dawa ya kuzawia kifu. They say to him. Money is not the medicine that can prevent from death. Don't you love that? Yeah, we pend here. Pesa sio dawa ya kuzawia kifu. Pesa sio dawa ya kuzawia kifu. Money is not the medicine that can prevent death. Sio pesa haiwezi kuwa dawa iwezayo kuzuia kifo. He's not quite persuaded. The young man still has itchy feet and still wants to go down to make some money. So the elders still have some work to do. So one elder says, Una acho, oh no, hold it. Una achota, una achota. What's this one? Una chotoa. Una chotoa. Yes. Uta kipata yes. zadi ya mara kumi. Amen. Una achatoa. What you give, <laughs> you will get back even more than ten times. Yes. Uchatoa. Una chotoa. Uta kipata. Uta kipata. You got that. Zadi. Yes. Ya mara kumi. Yeah. Ten times over. What you give, unachotoa. You get back more than ten times. Utakipata, unakipata kikirudi kwa kumara zaidi ya kuvu. These African elders. Wazeha wa waki Afrika. When it comes to understanding money, wanapokuja karika kuelewa swala la fedha au pesa. Were taught by God. Wali fundisho na mungu. To understand biblical principles. Kuelewa kanuni zaki biblia. That some of them had never heard in their lives. Ambazo ba. Come with me tonight to an ancient biblical city. That city is called Sardis. It's a very wealthy city. And there in this city, according to history, they have just discovered gold. The richest man in the world lives in this city. He lived 2,500 years ago. His name was King Croesus. What made him so wealthy? So much gold. So much silver in his city. Gold and silver coins were first used in Sardis. Sarafu za fedha na dhahabu vini zilitumika kwa mara ya kwanza. And so Croesus called a philosopher from Athens. Hivyo Croesus kamtafuta mwana falsafa kutoka Athene. And he said to this philosopher na kamwambia huyu mwana falsafa of all the men in the world kati ya wanadamu wa unaume wote duniani Who is the happiest? Now what did you think Croesus would think that this 
philosopher would say to him. Je, sasa unadhani ya kwamba Croesus alitegemea mwana falsafa angesemaje? He thought he would say, "Oh, you Croesus are the happiest man in the world." Alidhani Croesus alidhani ya kwamba huyu mwana falsafa angesema wewe ndiye mwenye furaha. The wise man said this. Lakini huyu mwenye hekima mwana falsafa akamwambia, "Croesus, I see you're very rich." Croesus anakuona huu tajiri sana. And you're the lord of many nations. Na wewe ni bwana wa mataifa mengi. But with respect where you question me. Lakini kulingana I have no real answer to give you until I sit with you on your dying day and you can look back on your life and say that you lived it well because money does not produce happiness. You see, in the past, as well as in the present. Unajua wakati uliopita kama ulivyo wakati uliopita. The wise man was right. Huyu mwenye hekima au wenye hekima walikuwa sahihi. And those wise elders were right. Na hawazee wa hekima walikuwa na hakika. That money is not the sum of life. Ya kwamba pesa sio jumla ya maisha. Why is it? Kwa nini ni hivi? That money is not the sum of life. Ya kwamba pesa sio jumlisho la maisha yote. For two reasons. Sababu mbili. One. Moja. Life is very uncertain. Maisha hayana uhakika. You can work all your life to have a home. Waweza ukafanya kazi maishani mwako maisha yote. You can work all your life to get a car. Wafanya kazi maishani mwako yote katika kutafuta kununua gari. And then you can get in a head on collision and get killed tomorrow. Na kisha ukakutana na ajali na ukafa kesho. So life is very uncertain. Hivyo maisha hayana uhakika yana umashaka. There's really no stability in money. Kwa kweli hakuna ule ulinganifu ulio na msimamo katika pesa. No security in money. Hakuna usalama katika pesa. Because it can be taken from you in an instant. Kwa sababu yaweza pesa ile kachukuliwa kutoka kwako katika muda mfupi kabisa. There is also no security in money. Na pia hakuna usalama katika pesa. Because it can't meet the needs of the soul. Kwa sababu pesa haiwezi kukidhi haja ya nafsi. Money can't give you inner peace. Pesa haiwezi kupatia amani ndani. Money can't deliver you from guilt. Pesa haiwezi kukuokoa kutoka katika hatia. Money can't give you the strength to overcome habits in your life that are destroying you. Pesa haiwezi kukusaidia kukutoka kutoka katika mazoea yanayokuharibu. Money can't guarantee a joyous future. Mapesa haiwezi kukupatia wakati ujao wenye furaha. That's why the Bible talks about another type of treasure. Ndio maana Biblia inanena juu ya hazina ya aina nyingine. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 20. Katika Mathayo 6 mstari wa 20. Jesus said this. Yesu alisema hivi. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Bali jiwekeni hazina mbinguni. Where neither moth nor rust destroys. Kusipoharibika kitu kwa nondo wala kutu. Where the thieves do not break through in Steel. When you lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, nobody can take them from you. There is a security in Christ. Upo usalama katika Kristo. A peace in Christ. Amani katika Kristo. A joy in Christ. Furaha katika Kristo. A strength in Christ. Nguvu katika Kristo. There is an internal peace that comes from having Jesus in your life. Kuna amani ndani sana ya moyo inayotokana na kuwa na ushirikiano mzuri na That all the money in the world cannot make up for. Amani ambayo pesa zote duniani haziwezi kukupatia. What did Jesus say in his Yesu alisemaje katika siku zake? In Matthew chapter 16 verse 26. Katika Mathayo mstari wa sura ya 16 mstari wa 26. What shall it profit a man? Kitamsaidia nini mtu? If he gains the whole world. Hata kiupata ulimwengu wote. But he loses his soul. Na kupata hasara ya nafsi yake. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mtu awezaje? Mtu anaweza kupata kutoa nini badala ya nafsi yake? Now there's nothing wrong essentially with money. Lakini hakuna kitu ambacho kimsingi ni kibaya katika pesa yenyewe. But if making money. Lakini kama kupata hiyo becomes the passion of our life. Kinakuwa ndio hamasa tu ya maisha yetu to the neglect of knowing Christ na katika kiwango ambacho inakuwa tofauti kinakuwa badala ya kumjua Kristo Judas sold his soul cheap 
And there are people that are selling their souls today. They're selling their souls. They're selling their souls for money. They are dishonest in business. They would cheat and steal others just to make more money. They have unethical business practices. All to get ahead themselves. They are selling their souls for money. Dishonesty. Lying. Changing prices. The lack of integrity. The lack of real decency and honesty. All to tramp other people down. All to oppress other people. Just so they could make some money. But in their hearts, they do not have peace. In their hearts, like Judas, they are filled with guilt and gloom and despair. The Bible says, in Psalm 90 verse 12, So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. What does it mean to number your days? It means to recognize that life is fragile. You may live 50 years. You may live 60. You may live 70. And if you get that exercise Mrs. Finley has been talking about and, and you eat that diet Mrs. Finley has been talking about and you sleep like she's been telling you to sleep and she teaches me to exercise too you see but if you do that you may live longer but I'll tell you something you're still going to die. If Jesus doesn't come, we may extend our lives, but we'll still die. So the Bible says, Psalm 90 verse 12, teach us to number our days. Teach us always, God, to recognize the fragility of life and give our hearts to wisdom. In other words, wisdom places priority on the things that will last forever. Knowing Jesus gives us the security of eternal life. And that will last forever. A heart attack cancer a car accident a strange dreaded disease can take our life in an instant now what does the bible predict is going to happen to the economy in the last days See, what's coming on this world? Does the Bible predict economic prosperity or does it predict economic disaster? You see, if you're putting your emphasis on money, if you're finding your security in money, and there's an economic disaster and you lose everything you have you are filled with despair 
The Bible predicts a major financial crisis. Let me read you two Bible passages on that. James, the apostle writes, James chapter 5, verse 1 to 3, Come now you rich, weep and howl, for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted. Your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. So James says, in the fifth chapter, verses 1 to 3, that those who have accumulated wealth will see their treasures slip through their fingers. He says your silver and gold is eroded. In other words, there will be a rapid devaluation of money. Now the book of Revelation, the special book that we're studying this series, speaks again about this rapid economic collapse. Revelation chapter 18 verse 10 to 17 in one hour God your judgment is come listen as I read the text those of you that can see it on the screen watch it there for the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her no one buys their merchandise anymore for in one hour great riches come to nothing here is a prediction of a sudden economic collapse. Now what is God's solution to keep us secure when this collapse comes and does God have a plan in the Bible that enables us to constantly recognize his ownership of everything and if we follow God's plan can he trust us, will he trust us with enormous heavenly blessings? Tonight I want to share God's plan with you. God's plan that leads us to trust him. God's plan that leads us to put our security in him. God's plan that opens our hearts to receive abundant blessings for God. If God has abundant blessings for you, how many of you want to receive God's abundant blessings? But God has a plan. Let's look at God's plan. When God created the world, He placed Adam and Eve in a marvelous garden. And there in that garden, God gave Adam and Eve everything that would bring them joy and happiness. But they were not owners of the garden. They were stewards in God's garden. 
bustani ya Mungu. God owns the world and everything in it. Mungu ni mwenye, ni mmiliki wa dunia na kila kilichomo ndani. So God said to Adam and Eve. Hiyo Mungu akamwambia Adam na Hawa. In Genesis 1 verse 28. Katika mwanzo sura ya kwanza mstari wa 28. Then God blessed them. Mungu alipowabariki. And God said to them. Mungu akawaambia. Be fruitful and multiply. Zaeni mkaongezeke. Fill the earth and subdue it. Mkaijaze nchi na kuitisha. And have dominion over the earth. Na mkatawale vyote duniani. Over the birds of the air. Wote ndege walioangaza. Over every living thing that moves on the earth. Kila kiumbe chenye uhai kiendacho juu ya nchi. So God said to them. Hivyo Mungu akawaambia. I placed you in a garden. Nimewapweka katika bustani. God said I own this garden. Aliwaambia nina mimi ndiye mmiliki But you are to care for it and keep it. Lakini ninyi mnapaswa kwa uangalifu kuitunza. You are stewards of my gifts. Ninyi ni wasimamizi wa karama zangu. But I've given you everything for a life. Na lakini niwapatia kila kitu kwa ajili ya maisha. Care for it. Ili muendelee pia kitu. Tend the garden well. Ili muitunze hii bustani. But as a sign. Lakini kama ishara. That God was owner of all. Ya kwamba Mungu ndiye mmiliki wa vyote. God placed within that garden. Mungu aliweka ndani katikati ya bustani. A tree. Mti. But he reminded Adam and Eve. Na akamkumbusha Adam na Hawa. Look what it says in Psalm 50 verse 10. Hebu kumbuka ile ambayo nasema Zaburi ya 50 mstari wa 10. God reminds the entire human race. Mungu anakumbusha dunia yote. Every beast of the forest is mine. Anasema kila hayawani ni wangu. And the cattle on 10,000 hills are mine. Na makundi juu ya milima elfu ni vyangu. Isaiah 50 verse Psalm 50 verse 12. Hiyo Zaburi ya 50 mstari wa 12. God says. Mungu anasema if I were hungry. Kama ningekuwa na njaa. I would not tell you. Singekuambia for the world is mine and all God says the world is mine but at that tree at that tree Satan came the tree of the knowledge of good and evil belong to God's or domain alone and it was a symbol na ilikuwa ni ishara that Adam and Eve ya Adam na hawa, were stewards in the whole garden walikuwa wa, wa simamizi wa, wa, wa the reason that taking that fruit was so serious swala ya kwamba kuchukua tunda la mti ule ilikuwa swala mzito sana because Adam and Eve were defying God's ownership ilikuwa kwamba wanakataa umiliki wa Mungu katika vyote they were really saying This garden belongs to us. We can do whatever we want. So Eve took the fruit and opened a door God wanted forever shut. God's plan for the human race was always to recognize He is the creator. He is the giver of all good gifts. The sun shines upon us because God gave it. The crops grow because God gave them. Every breath out of our mouth comes because God gave it. When Adam and Eve took the tree, they took their lives into their own hands. Walichukua maisha yao mikononi mwao wenyewe. They were separated from the source of life. Wakajitenga na aliye chanzo cha uhai. Death entered into their body. Na hivyo kwa kweli wakalifanya hilo katika mimi yako. The tree represented the living reality. Mti mti huu liwakilisha ukweli halisi. That God was the owner of the earth. Ya kwamba yeye Mungu bado ndiye mtawala wa dunia. And when Eve yielded to Satan's temptation. Ya na wakati walipokubali kuingia katika dhambi hii na kujaribu. That which was God God's and God's alone. Now wali walisahau hawa pia akasahau ya kwamba hivi ni vya Mungu na ni Mungu peke yake. Is there a tree for us today? Je, kuna mti ambao unatukabili sisi leo? Is there a way today? Je, ipo njia moja leo? That God says to you and me. Ambayo kwa hiyo Mungu anasema kwa I want you to acknowledge. Nataka utambue au uoneshe. In your finances. Katika fedha zako. That I am God over all the earth. Ya kwamba mimi ndiye Mungu wa dunia yote. 
every good gift comes from me. Ya kwamba kila karama njema au kizuri chatoka kwangu. Notice what it says in Acts 17 verse 24 and 25. Tambua kile kinachosemwa kwenye Matendo 17 mstari wa 24 na 25. God who made the world and everything in it. Mungu aliyeumba ulimwengu, dunia na kila kilichomo ndani yake. Gives to a life. Anatupatia anaweka uhai. In breath na pumzi in all things katika vitu vyote could you say with me tonight je unaweza ukasema nami god is the giver of all good gifts mungu ndiye mpaji wa kila kilichochema together hebu tuseme pamoja mungu mungu ndiye mpaji ni mpaji wa kila kilichochema wa kila kila kilicho kila kilicho Chema. Chema. Yes. Say it together. Tuseme pamoja. Mungu ndiye mpaji wa kila kilicho chema. God is the giver of all good gifts. Mungu ndiye mtoaji na mpaji wa kila kilicho au karama hiyo. Put your hand on your heart. Hebu weka mkono wako juu pale moyo wako unaposikia. Put your hand on your heart. Weka pale moyo wako unapodunda. Thumb. Nasikia mpigo. Thumb. Thumb. Who makes your heart beat? Nani anayofanya moyo wako udunde? Breathe out. Hebu kumua. Who gives you breath? Who makes the sun to shine upon you? Who, who grows the crops? You see, God is the giver of all good gifts. Now notice what God says. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. You shall remember the Lord your God. Utamkumbuka utamheshimu Bwana Mungu wako for he gives you power to get wealth kwa sababu ndiye akupae nguvu za kupata utajiri Now there are two great texts in the Bible that say remember Sasa kuna mafungu mawili makuu katika Biblia yasemayo kumbuka One speaks about our time moja linanena juu ya muda The other speaks about our finances Na lingine linanena juu ya fedha When God says remember the Sabbath day Mungu aliposema ikumbuke siku ya Sabato He says one seventh of time Anasema juu ya moja ya saba ya the seventh day of the week is set aside as holy time. So as we keep the Sabbath, we are, are saying all of our time is God's. We acknowledge his creatorship and his lordship over all of our time by keeping the Sabbath. Now when he says remember the Lord your God that gives you power to get wealth How do I remember that? How do we remember that God is the one that gives me everything I have? All of the talents and abilities that we have to earn a living come from God all of the opportunities and possibilities we have Kila come from God. Na kila jambo linalowezekana ni yote ambayo anaonesha anatoka kwa Mungu. All of the health and strength to earn a living comes from God. Afya yote na yale yale yote tunayotumia katika kupata maisha yanatoka kwa Mungu. How do we remember? Tunawezaje sasa kuonesha tunakumbuka? On a very practical basis. Katika msingi ambao ni halisi. That God is the owner of all the things that we have in life and gives us all good things. Yeye ambaye ni Mungu na ndiye anayetupatia hivi vyote vilivyo vizuri. In Haggai 2 verse 8. Katika Haggai sura ya pili mstari wa 8. God says the silver and gold is mine says the Lord. Mungu anasema dhahabu na fedha ni vyangu asema Bwana wa majeshi. All of our money is God's. Vyote now Abraham, Abraham who had scores of cattle recognized alitambua. that God was the one that gave him all his cattle and as Abraham wandered out under the stars na wakati Ibrahim alipokuwa na tamba, anasamba, anatembea, the Bible says Biblia Genesis 14 verse 19 
Mwanzo sura ya 14 mstari wa 28 Blessed be Abraham of God most high Bwana Mungu wa Ibrahim abarikiwa na Mungu wa Mungu ambaye aliye juu Abraham says Ibrahim anasema God is possessor of heaven and earth Yeye Mungu ndiye mwenye mbingu na nchi Blessed be the God most high Yeye Mungu aliye juu sana na abarikiwe And it says Na anasema hivi That Abraham Ya kwamba Ibrahim gave to Melchizedek alimpatia Melchizedek the priest ambaye alikuwa kuhani a tithe alimpatia zaka what did abraham do that for kwa nini au kwa sababu gani ibrahim alilifanya abraham recognized ibrahim alitambua that all the blessings of this life ya kwamba baraka zote za maisha were given him by god tumepewa na Mungu so we return to god hivyo tunaporudisha kwake Mungu a tithe tunaporudisha ile zaka which means a tenth So this great man of God Abraham counted out his cattle in every tenth cattle. He said, God, I'm giving that back to you. Because God, a tenth of my cattle, a, a tenth of my crops, a tenth of my money, katika moja ya kumi ya mpesa that is the acknowledgement hiyo ni namna ya kutambua that you own the universe ya kwamba wewe ndiye mwenye ulimwengu wote by returning tithe kwa kurejesha zaka abraham acknowledged god's goodness ibrahim alionesha kutambua wema wake abraham opened his heart to receive more blessings from god na hivyo ibrahim alifungua moyo wake kupokea baraka zaidi kutoka kwa mungu one night usiku moja jacob went to sleep yakobo alilala And there he had a dream. Na pale aliota ndoto. And he met God. Na akakutana na Mungu. And the Bible says. Na Biblia inasema. That in Genesis 28 verse 22. Katika mwanzo 28 mstari wa 22. Jacob says. Yakobo anasema. Oh God. E Mungu. Of all that you give me. Katika yote unakayotakayo nipatia. I will give a tenth back to you. Nitakupa wewe sehemu ya kumi. You see the tithing principle. Unaona kanuni ya ya zaka. Is the acknowledgement. Ni hali ya utambuzi. That every breath I take comes from God. Ya kwamba kila pumzi ninayotoa inatoka kwa Mungu. Every heartbeat comes from God. Kila mdundo wa moyo unatoka kwa Mungu. Any ability I have to make wealth comes from God. Uwezo wote nilionao ninalionao unatoka kwa Mungu. The crops that grow, the sun that shine comes from God. Jua linaloaka na mazao yanayokuwa yanatoka kwa Mungu. Just as when we keep sabbath kama vile ambavyo unapoishika sabato and dedicate a seventh of our time tunaweka moja ya saba ya muda wetu we are saying all time belongs to god tunasema muda wote kwa kweli ni wa mungu and i want to use it wisely na hivyo katika namna hiyo hiyo so when we give back to god tunapomrudishia zaka mungu one tenth the time moja ya kumi ya zaka we are saying god tunamwambia mungu every good gift comes from you kila karama iliyo njema inatoka and i want to use whatever i have wisely na hivyo nitaitumia kila kitu kwa kwa hekima so a tithe by god zaka kwa mungu is an amazingly fair system ni mtindo au mfumo ulio wa, wa haki kabisa. A person says, well, I'm poor, I don't have much. Na mtu anaweza kusema mimi ni fukara na wala sina vingi. God says, Mungu anasema, give a tenth of what you have and watch the way I bless you. Eh wewe toa moja ya kumi ya kile ulicho nacho na a tenth for a very poor person. Na moja ya kumi ya mtu ambaye ni fukara sana. different than a tenth for a very rich person. Ni tofauti kabisa na moja ya kumi ya mtu ambaye ana vingi. So God says, hivyo Mungu anasema, be blessed kama unataka kubarikiwa you see selfishness keeps us from receiving the blessings of god who ubinafsi unatuzuia kupokea ili tusipokee baraka you know the african elder ukumbuka huyu mzee wa kiafrika was so right alikuwa sahihi when he said aliposema una akachotoa what you give uta kipata Zadi ya mara kumi. You will get back ten times over. What did God say? Mungu anasemaje? What you give? Unachokitoa. You are going to get back ten times over. Utakibata, utakirudishi, utarudishiwa mara kumi zaidi. God says I'll bless your life. 
Mungu anasema nitabariki maisha yangu. Wish you cannot imagine. Katika njia ambazo hata huwezi kufikiria. Now the Bible says in Leviticus 27 verse 30. Biblia inasema katika mambo ya Walawi 27 mstari wa 30. All the tithe of the land. Katika zaka yote ya nchi. Whether the seed of the land. Iwe ni mbegu katika nchi. Or the fruit of the tree. Au ni katika mazao. It's the Lord's. Ni mali ya Mungu ya Bwana. It is holy to the Lord. Vyote kabisa ni vya Bwana, ni mtakatifu kwa Bwana. So although everything I have belongs to God. Hivyo ili kuonesha kwa kila kitu nilicho nacho ni cha Mungu. One tenth. Moja ya kumi. Is holy to the Lord. Ni takatifu kwa Bwana. It is sanctified for the Lord. Kinawekwa wakfu kwa ajili ya Bwana kila wakati. It is set aside. Na hivyo katika kusema hivyo. By God. Kwa kwa kutoka kwa Mungu to advance his gospel around the world ili kwa kwa sababu kwa njia hiyo tuweze kueneza injili yake katika ulimwengu I was teaching about tithe one night nilikuwa nikifundisha juu ya zaka jioni moja and I was pointing out na nikaa nikisema that one tenth of what we have kama moja ya kumi ya kile tulicho nacho sanctified holy to the lord kimetakaswa na ni takatifu and if we want heaven's richest blessings na kama unataka baraka nene za mungu na katika maisha yetu i was encouraging people to be faithful to god nilikuwa nawatia moyo watu wa waaminifu kwa mungu the next day siku iliyofuata a man came to my office mtu mmoja alinijia ofisi now when he walked in the office na alipoingia kwenye ofisi i could tell he wasn't too happy nilimwona He was really angry. And he was quite angry at me. And he had a paper bag in his hand. And in that paper bag, there were all the bills that he was supposed to pay. And he came into my office. And he said, You said I had to pay tithe. I didn't say he had to pay tithe. I just read the Bible to the man. And so I said to him, the Bible says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. He said, you tell me how I can pay tithe. He took that bag and he began taking out his bills. Everything he owed for the month Madeni yake yote kwa mwezi. He was throwing them on my desk. Na kawa na tupa zile kavieti zile receipti katika mesa. And he said, preacher, you add these things up. Na asema sasa hebu hebu ni hubiri katika mambo haya. I have to pay more. Et nilipe zaidi. That I make. Ina nipasa sasa nilipe zaidi katika bili kuliko ni vinavyo pata. I can't do this. Siwezi sasa kulipa. I my expenses. Ni nina gharama zangu. The money I pay for food. Ni na pesa ninayotumia kwa chakula. The money I pay for my house. Pesa ninayo nipa kwa ajili ya nyumba. I can't do this. It's impossible. Siwezi kufanya hili haiwezekani. I said to him. Nikamwambia. My dear man. I have one question for you. Yes, Pastor, what's your question? Has your way of managing your money solved your financial problems? Has your way of managing your money solved your financial problems? He said, Pastor, you know it has not. I said, let me read you a Bible passage. I turned in the Bible to Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. And it says, will a man rob God? I wouldn't want to rob God, would you? How many want to say tonight, I don't want to rob God? I don't want to rob God. I don't want to rob God. Will a man rob God? I read the man this text. Yet you have robbed me. But you say what? Way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Now listen to what God says. Bring all the tithes into my storehouse. That there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I'll not open the windows of heaven. 
and pour out a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. How many of you want a blessing so you can't even receive it? It's a blessing so great. Now that blessing may be a financial blessing. But God can bless us other ways too. He can give you a joy in your life you never had. He can give you a peace in your life you never had. He can give you a closeness in your family you never had. He can bless your health. He can bless your finances. So I said to this man, here's what I would suggest to you. Do what this text says. Jesus says, test me. Jesus says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. And test me. If I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you that is so great you can't receive it. I said to the man for the next six months test God be faithful in your tithe. That man took that counsel to heart and God worked a miracle in his life. I have seen people in debt that miraculously began to be faithful to God in America there's a great entrepreneur he was a multi multi millionaire his name J.C. Penny he started stores large clothing stores all across America they were merchandise and retail stores. He was born in 1875. When he started his first store, his business failed. When, when the business failed, and he lost most of his money, he had a physical collapse. He was brought to a Seventh-day Adventist hospital. He was not an Adventist. He was discouraged. He was depressed. His health was ruined. But there, at that hospital, they taught him about a good diet. Taught him about exercise. Gave him health treatments. But it was at that hospital that he met God. It was at that hospital that he began reading the Bible. One day, in a little chapel, he was sitting there quietly and he said, God, I am so poor I can't afford it. But I am going to be faithful to you. I'm going to begin returning tithes. Convinced that he should begin turning tithes. Even, Even though he was in debt. Even though he was in poverty. He said, God, I will do it. He opened his heart to receive the blessings of God. And when he died at 95 years old, God had so incredibly blessed his health, so incredibly blessed his businesses, that there was an empire 
empire across America of this man's stores. Kiasi ambacho anahimaya ya utajiri katika taifa zima la Marekani la maduka yake. Have you ever heard of the name of J.D. Rockefeller? Je, mmewahi kusikia jina la huyu John Rockefeller? One of the richest men in the world. Mmoja wa watu walio tajiri sana duniani. When he was young, alipokuwa kijana, he said I have to be faithful in time. Alisema ni inanipasa niwe mwaminifu katika zake. Have you ever heard of the Hershey candy bars? Je, mmewahi kusikia zile chocolate za Hershey? Yeah, he began to pay time. Alianza kurudisha zaka businessman after businessman mfanya biashara mmoja baada ya mwingine because here's what god says kwa sababu hili ndilo mungu asemao malachi 3 verse 11 katika malaki sura ya 3 mstari wa 11 he says i will rebuke the devourer asema nami nitamkemea yeye alaye god will rebuke the devil in your life mungu atamkemea mwovu maishani mwako god will rebuke the devil in your life mungu atamkemea mwovu maishani mwako if you become faithful to christ kama ukiwa mwaminifu kwa kristo now it's amazing what God does. Sasa inashangaza kile Bwana atendacho. Malachi 3 verse 11. Katika Malaki sura ya 3:11. God says your vines will bear fruit. Mungu anasema mazao yako yatazaa. Your fields will bear fruit. Mizabibu itazaa. Now sometimes. Unajua wakati fulani. We can be faithful to God. Tuweza kuwa waaminifu kwa Mungu. And disaster may happen. Na bala uzaha maikatokea. But God will surprise us. Lakini Mungu atatushangaza. Because God's ways are not man's ways. Kwa sababu njia za Mungu sio njia za mwanadamu. Let me tell you a very true story. Hebu niwape kisa kimoja kizuri sana. About Farmer Sam. Juu ya mkulima mmoja. Farmer Sam. Farmer Sam. Farmer Sam lived in the Midwest of America. Yeye aliishi katika sehemu ya kati ya Marekani. And he grew wheat and crops. Na alikuwa akilima ngano na mazao mengine. He was committed to Jesus. Lakini alikuwa amejitoa kwa Yesu. Faithful in his time. Alikuwa mwaminifu katika zaka yake. There was a great locust. Kukawa na plague that came across. Na pigo la nzige wengi waliokuja. Large bugs. Walikuwa wengi wakubwa. That were eating up all the farms. Ambao walikuwa nakula mazao ya mashamba yao. They ate the farm next to him. Walikuwa mazao yaliokuwa karibu na yao. They ate the farm on the left. Wakala wakamaliza. They ate the farm on the right. Wakala kutoka kulia na kushoto. They ate the farm to the north and south. Wakala kaskazini na kusini. But what happened? They came to his farm. Wakaja kwenye shamba lake. And they ate it all down. Wakala mazao yake yote. They ate everything. Wakala kila kitu. His farm was devastated. Shamba lake lika huyu mkulima akawa. His friends began to laugh at him. Ah rafiki zake wakaanza kumcheka. You were faithful in your time. Ulikuwa mwaminifu katika zake. And they ate your farm too. Na nzige wamekula pia kwenye shamba lako. He had a big smile on his face. Alikuwa na tabasamu kubwa usoni mwake. His friends couldn't understand it. Marafiki zake hawakulielewa hili. And he said this. Akamwambia. Look my friend. Haibusikilizeni rafiki zake. I gave that farm to God long ago. Nilimpatia Mungu hili shamba zamani. That was God's farm. Hilo ilikuwa shamba la Mungu. And you see those locusts? Na unaona wale nzige? They were God's locusts. Nao ni So if God wants to feed his locusts on his farm, that's okay with me. Now look, my friend. Here's what happened. Everybody else was so depressed. But Farmer Sam knew that God was in control. The day his farm was destroyed, he drove to town, replowed his fields, got new seed, put it in. He had the best crop in years and made more money than he would have made if the locust didn't destroy his crops. Be faithful to God and God is going to surprise you. God's going to give you blessings you don't realize. Psalm 37 verse 25 says this. I've been young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread 
au mwenye mwenye shida akiomba mkate when we are faithful to god tukiwa waaminifu kwa mungu he promises to meet our needs anatuahidi ya kwamba atatufanyia mambo all the blessings of heaven are yours baraka zote za mbinguni ni zako here's what god says to you hiki ndicho mungu anachokuambia philippians 4 verse 19 katika waebrani wa filipi 4 fungu la hivi my god mungu wangu shall supply all your needs ataku according to his riches in glory kulingana na na tajiri wa utukufu wake my god mungu wangu shall supply atakupatia how many of our needs mahitaji mangapi how many of our needs mahitaji mangapi all of our needs yote according to his riches in glory kulingana na utajiri wake katika utukufu when we are faithful to god tukiwa waaminifu kwa mungu he says anasema proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10 wa mithali 3 mstari wa 9 na wa 10 honor the lord with your possession mheshimu bwana kwa mali zako and with the first fruits of all your increase na malimbuko ya mazao yako and your barns will be filled with plenty na ghala zako zitajazwa kwa wingi do you want god's blessings Je, unahitaji baraka ya Mungu? Do you want God's abundance? Je, unataka ile mali tele kutoka kwa Mungu? Do you want God's plenty in your life? Je, unataka ule wingi wa Mungu katika maisha yako? Be faithful to God. Uwe mwaminifu kwa Mungu. Putting Christ first in our lives. Tukimweka Kristo wa kwanza maishani. Opens us. Kunatufanya tukumbuke. To magnificent blessings. Kupokea baraka za ajabu. But, but when we are unfaithful. Lakini tusipokuwa waaminifu. We are closed to receive receive those blessings. Tunafungwa tusipokee hizo baraka. The Bible says. Biblia inasema. Matthew 6 verse 33. Mathayo 6:33. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Bali utafuteni kwanza ufalme wake. And all these things. Na haki yake na mambo haya yote. Will be added unto you. Mtazidishiwa. In fact Jesus even said. Na unajua Yesu pia alisema. That we ought to pay tithe. Ya kwamba unapaswa kulipa. He said be faithful in your tithe. Anasema anasema pia wewe unapaswa Let me tell you. Hebu niwaambie. About an amazing woman. Juu ya mwanamke wa jana. She was born in the country of Albania. Alizaliwa katika nchi ya Albania. The country of Albania. Nchi ya Albania was the only country in the world. Ilikuwa ni nchi pekee duniani that was constitutionally atheistic. Ambayo kikatiba ilisema hakuna Mungu. In the Albanian constitution. Katika katiba ya Albania. The only nation in the world. Taifa pekee duniani. They wrote There is no god. Ya kwamba hakuna Mungu. And we will govern. Na tutatawala. And our citizens will obey. Wanadamu wanaoelewa wetu watatii. No god. Lakini hakuna Mungu. In the 1940s. Katika miaka ya 1940. A young woman at the time. Huyu mwanamke akiwa kijana. By the name of Mayopi Gorka. Jina lake akiitwa Mayopi Gorka. Through a series of miracles. Katika mfululizo wa miujiza. Was given a bible. Alipewa Biblia. She was given that Bible. Alipewa ile Biblia. Before the communists took over Albania. Kabla wa komunisti hawajaichukua na kuitoa Albania. And she met an Adventist missionary. Na akakutana na mwanamishonari wa Adventist. In the 1940s. Miaka ya 40 hiyo. Before the country became constitutionally atheistic. Kabla taifa nchi yake haijawekewa katiba hiyo ya upagani. She studied the Bible. Akajifunza Biblia. And she gave her life to Jesus. Akatoa She believed Jesus was coming again. Akaamini Yesu anakuja tena. She accepted the Bible. Akakubali sabato ya Biblia. And for 47 years. Na kwa miaka 47. She kept the Bible Sabbath in her home by herself. Alishika sabato ya Biblia akiwa peke yake. She read the principle of tithing in the Bible. Alisoma kanuni ya zakat kwenye Biblia. For 47 years. Kwa miaka 47. She had a little pension, a little money coming in alikuwa na pesa kidogo ilikuwa ikiingia kila wakati communism had taken over ukomunisti ukawa umetawala she was oppressed and persecuted alikuwa ameteswa na kukandamizwa but she was faithful to god lakini alikuwa mwaminifu kwa mungu and for 47 years na kwa miaka 47 she took a tenth of her income alikuwa akichukua moja ya kumi ya and she put it in a safe place under her bed na aliweka kwenye mahali salama chini ya kitanda and she prayed na aliomba Oh Jesus. Hey, yes. 
Oh Jesus, hey, yes. one day Siku more. I want to be reunited with Bible believing, Na watu with Sabbath keeping. Lord, one day I want to take my tithe and I want to give it to the people of God. Na kwa watu wa Mungu. And she saved her tithe Na ali tunza for 47 years kwa miaka in 1991. When communism fell, one of my dear friends went to Albania to preach the gospel. And somebody said to him, There's an old woman. She is frail. But there's an old woman. She loves Jesus. She keeps the Bible Sabbath. You must go visit her. 47 years ago, she was in contact with Adventists. My friend went to the home, knocked on the door. A frail old woman opened the door. She was shaking. And he said, I am a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. And she reached him and embraced him and kissed him. She said, I knew you would come. I knew you would come. Because I had three prayers. Prayer number one. That I could take my tithe. Wait here, wait here. Come in my house, come in my house. I saved it for 47 years. Here it is. The, the, the money of a widow. Take this. So the gospel can be preached. My first prayer. My first prayer. Was that every, this money would be used. To go to the ends of the earth. But Pastor, I have a second prayer. Pastor, I've been praying for 47 years. Pastor, baptize me. Pastor, baptize me. She was the first Adventist baptized in that country after the fall of communism. She said, I have a third prayer. To worship with God's people. God answered those prayers. Tonight God says to you. Wherever you are tonight God is speaking to you. God is saying to you. I have more for your life than you can imagine. I have abundance for your life. I have plenty for your life. God is saying. Don't settle for anything less. I want to fill your heart with joy. I want to fill your life with peace. I want to give you the gift of health. I want to bless you financially. God says be faithful to me when we're faithful to God we let God choose what gifts he wants to give to us but there are gifts that he will give when we are faithful to God we let God choose the blessings we don't demand the gifts we don't demand the blessings how many of you want tonight raise two hands you want gifts and blessings tonight an old woman is speaking to you tonight no she can't speak verbally she has died now she rests in her grave. But the influence of her life, the influence of her life, speaks to us tonight. And Jesus is speaking to you. Will you stand to your feet and say, Jesus, I acknowledge tonight that you're the owner of the universe. I acknowledge tonight that everything I have comes from you. And I want to be faithful. Would you like to stand and say that to Jesus tonight? Wherever you are. That you want to be faithful. 
that you're opening your heart for the blessing and gifts of God. Meoki Gorka waited for 47 years to be baptized. You don't have to wait for 47 years. God is calling you to make that decision tonight. You see, if you hold back, if you resist, if you hesitate, God can't bless your life the way he wants to bless it. God can't give you the abundance he wants to give you. It's only as we give everything to him that he can give everything to us. Tonight, somebody who's been hesitating, you hear the voice of God speaking to you. You want God's gifts. You want God's abundance. You want to look forward to Bible baptism. You want to give your all to Christ so he can give his all to you. Just lift your hand for my prayer tonight. You want to give all to Jesus. You want to be baptized. You want to follow him. If you've drifted away, he has an abundance for you. Lift your hand and come back to Jesus. We're going to pray tonight. Oh, my Father. You're a God of abundance. You're a God of plenty. You're a God of blessings. We open our hearts to receive the blessings of heaven. We're not always wise enough to know what those blessings are. But we know you're the giver of all good gifts. We give ourselves to you. Rain down your blessings upon us. We open our hearts to receive your gifts. Many have raised their hand tonight to follow Jesus in Bible baptism. Some drifted away and they're coming back. Father, as they come forward tonight to pray with our pastors, to pray with our elders, grant them your blessing, grant them your abundance, grant them your plenty. Let a wingy fulfill your word that my God shall supply all your needs according to the riches in glory. In Christ's name, Amen. Amen. Now, tonight. Our elders and our pastors and Bible workers, they're going to come forward right here. Hundreds and hundreds are preparing for baptism. We have a baptismal class at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. But if you have raised your hand, you want to look forward to baptism. If you want God's abundance, God's plenty. Come on up and join and pray with our pastors and elders. Just come forward. They will pray with you. They will counsel you. And God will bless in mighty ways. In the name of Jesus, amen.